All right, be safe out there this morning as we get you up and get you going. Preston Iris in here just talking about it, coming in here in Columbia. Kind of eerie out there. It's uh, storming, rain, lightning. Kind of, is lightning pretty? No. No, you're not a lightning is pretty kind of guy? When not it a fan it? at all. Not a fan? Very low on the Preston Thorne depth charts of ever, of life. Yeah. Jen, I don't know what we got going on in the background now. Storm's playing around with the, uh, there we go. Yep, not sure what that was. All right, that's what kind of morning. Yeah, lightning's very low on the depth chart of life for Preston. Extremely low. Very low. Only followed by thunder. Oh, oh you're one of those people. Yeah. Don't handle it well at all? Not great. Really? Mm-mm. Okay. Not, not a good time. Not a good time for Preston at all. So, if you understand that I am here for all of us today in the midst of all this thunder and lightning, realize the sacrifice <laughs> that, you have that, made. that I've made. Because if I was at home, I would be in my bathroom right now. Really? Oh, for sure. Oh, is it? Jen, it's not that bad out there. Am oh, I, wait, 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 Bill. You cannot minimize my trauma. No, that's what I'm saying. No, like, no, no you just said it's not is, that bad. I this just told is, you. Well, no, this is, this is we're, we're going to learn a little bit about Preston. Like, we're learning your threshold here. There is no threshold. Okay, so you're it's just. Lightning, thunder, bathroom. Zero. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's easy. All right. I, I will admit, amateur meteorologist that I am, love storms. No. Like love them. Absolutely love that's the you know, see seeing the light that slept with the with the blinds or the the curtains wide open last night so that if I was awake I happened to call it, catch some of the, the lightning across yeah. the lake. Very pretty. <laughs> very pretty. All right. Well, yeah, it is uh it's nasty out there today, so be safe, be careful. We'll see. It is supposed to move out later on i believe around lunchtime at least by lunchtime so that should allow us or sh should allow south carolina tonight to get the game in against georgia southern uh a game that they probably need need a little bit of to get they, they, the way they continue to tinker preston thorn looking for the right combination the right lineup to kind of find that confidence I think that's important with another big series coming up this weekend yeah they got to win this midweek um as they're looking at the seasons going along they have to win all the games that they can, especially if they continue the their trends as they have on the weekend series. Midweek games are going to come in in handy when you start getting towards seeding uh, as the season moves forward. And so we should got to get this one. Should start it just kind of to your point. We should start getting some of those bracketology reports coming out here in the very near future. Texas A and M, who comes into town uh, this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, currently up to number three in the most uh, recent Division One D1 baseball.com poll. Uh, Texas A&M was number four last week. They've moved up to number three. Clemson is up to number two, by the way. Uh, South Carolina in the poll dropping to number 22 after dropping two of three on the road at Alabama. So the Gamecocks, it'll be another top 25 showdown over at Founders Park this weekend when the number 22 Gamecocks host the number three ranked Texas A&M. Aggies, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this might be a good sign. I think Vanderbilt, at least in D1 or one of the polls, Vanderbilt was also number three. So maybe that works very well. Oh, so they, we just we just take just, out the number threes. Yes. All right. I was gonna okay. say, maybe, That'll work. Maybe something for that. So we'll, we'll get into that. Also get into some spring practice uh, coming up here in the next segment. Talk a little more about that. Shane Beamer talking yesterday and again Preston I'll continue to say this is this is the spring practice see a nice quiet I thought about this after I left the show yesterday a nice quiet spring practice minimal uh videos coming out minimal thing all of a sudden my hype meter my excitement meter growing just a little because I'm not being inundated with with stuff it's a nice quiet spring at least at this point on April the 3rd, with 17 days to go, uh, 17 days, I, I don't know exactly how many practices. I think they're about the halfway point. No major injuries. Bradley done now out, but it, Juju McDowell out with a collarbone, but nothing significant just yet. It's going kind of as I feel like it needs to go. Yeah, but I mean, if a, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody hears it, does it make us it's good? Sound? It's good. It's the <laughs> kind mean, of, how do we even know they're practicing over there? We, I don't know. Is, is maybe our, they're not. And you know things what? happening? We don't know. That, that's, and that's why I told you. Well, we know because or at least we know that they go out for about 36 minutes. We know they minutes. stretch. We, <laughs> they stretch and they do some special teams drills because the reporters have seen that. But to me, this is a very good spring practice. Now, 
is as a player, is there such a thing, maybe, or as a senior, I guess, maybe, as a mundane spring practice? By the time you get to it, your senior year, you're just like, all right. Yeah, I'm uh, done. I, I, I'm over this. This is, this is we're doing the same things over and over again. Yeah, so by the time you've been through the paces a little bit, there is a sense of routineness. You know, you're doing the same thing over and over again. But there's a lot of changes around. So I don't know. There, 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 there could be... It could be some new things, especially if they some of the guys have new position coaches. So, yeah, it's it's, it's interesting, but it is sort of seems like it's pretty low key, especially from what we've been used to coming from from over there. And I and I like that. Again, I, I like that in terms of the way things uh, really have been set up with them. Just do it low key. Okay, let's stay. Let's do our best. Do our best, despite me just completely drinking too much coffee yesterday and getting too wound up and wanting to overhype O.D. Fortune and and compare him maybe to having a senior season much like Xavier Leggett. Not from a statistical standpoint. That was ridiculous what Leggett just pulled off. But it is it is kind of a situation where I think this is good for South Carolina. Try and limit Try and limit how excited we are getting about Lenora Sellers and about Sean Elliott and about how great that running game is going to be this year and how the offensive line is just going to maul people. You see what happens there? You just I you, feel, the, I feel the, you ramping up. Yeah, yeah, you see how that's working? I feel you ramping up. But why we want to limit, man? What We have the whole season for us to potentially be limited by reality. This is the time to dream. I, I this think, is dream season, Bill. I, I think because I want to limit it. I want to. I want to be that grumpy old person until about mid June, maybe. Okay, you just about mid June. Just holding off. Right, about mid June, I'll be ready to ramp it up, you know, and then I'll start wasting away, wishing away the summer. And at that point, I, I think it'll be okay when we're when we're into our 100 days before football countdown. I feel like that's when it becomes fair to start to lose your mind a little bit and have uh, visions of Lenora Sellers accepting the Heisman Trophy in, in early December, playoff games for South Carolina in, in, in mid-December, championship thoughts in late December and January. See how that just, I got to hold off for a few few months. 803-404-6100, though, if you want to get a little overly hyped. Also this morning, we'll talk a little bit about Michi Johnson. All right, he went home. It validates everything, right? You feel? Do we all feel good about it? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to find out. I'm curious to find out what what that means. Um, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. What's home? You left it. We'll, Where's home? What is home? I don't know. No, it's pre- the 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 big questions of life that we ask. Where is home? I mean, what I'm, is home? I'm from Somerville, but I don't live there. Okay. All right. What's home? Okay. All right. I see where Preston Thorne is going with that. We'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, if you didn't see yesterday, Michi Johnson uh, officially going back to uh, Ohio State. I do wonder, the one serious thing I do wonder about this is if this means he's gone ahead and decided he's not going to test the NBA draft waters. Like, if he's not even, to be honest with you, I have not seen where he has put his name in officially for the NBA draft to even get feedback, which I think is smart. I mean, if I was if I was advising Zach Davis or Colin Murray Boyles or Miles Studi or, I mean, even Josh Gray, I'd be like, yeah, put your name in. See if you can get a workout with someone. See if you can get any kind of feedback and see what they say. And then, then you can make a decision from there and uh, go from learn what you need to work on in the offseason. I don't think Michi Johnson's done that, but we'll talk a little bit about that this morning. Does it does it validate his decision? And now the way he has handled his decision, going on Instagram and putting something out there, we'll talk all about all that this morning. 803-404-6100. That's how you can weigh in if you want to do so. Got into a little baseball last night. Good news for Jen. I watched her Cubs absolutely demolish, absolutely demolish the Colorado Rockies last night. Cubs look good, Jen. You might have something going on there in Wrigleyville. One can only hope, and I've learned that you just don't get too excited with the Cubs because they can lead you down a path of much excitement and glory, and then it just goes kaput. But I did see that the Braves lost to the White Sox, and that probably had to sting a little bit. That right there is not getting too hyped. 12-2 to two last night. The Cubs win 3-2 and two on the season, and a wet blanket Jensen over here jumps in to say, don't let them, don't let them lead you down a path. 
Don't let them get you too excited. They're the Cubs. They're going to do too something. I got years of this, man. I got to protect There my you heart. go. Hey, see? You see, this is I'm holding out on spring football. She's holding out on the Cubs right now, and she's already down on the Bears. <laughs> Has no faith in the Bears. First pick, Bears on the clock. <laughs> Bear on the clock. 803-404-6100 this morning. Be safe out there. It is rainy. It, it is, is nasty. nasty. Uh, it is supposed to clear out of here in just a little while, but as you're trying to get to work, as you're trying to get to wherever you need to go this morning, try and be safe, we'll carry you through. We'll talk a little spring football, let you listen to a little bit of Shane Beamer when we come back. You're listening to The Early Game.
It most definitely is a mess out there to, this morning uh, if you're dealing with heavy rain, uh, standing water, all of that. Uh, traffic lights malfunctioning or actually are out at this point. Gervais at Huji. Um, also an accident, I-20 eastbound at Longs Pond Road where the left lane is blocked. I-20 westbound at Two Notch Road, the right lane blocked. I-20 westbound at Highway 378, report of an accident there. I-126 eastbound at Greystone Boulevard. And I-77 northbound at Bluff Road. Again, really sloppy conditions this morning. And it should be getting out of here before lunchtime. So, and actually, the worst of it should be through by about 9 o'clock this morning. So, we'll hope for the best on that. 74 for the high today. And then about 65 tomorrow. Right now, heavy rain in the Midlands, 69. The craft beer card is back. Maybe it never really went away. I don't know. But uh, whatever it is today, it is back. You can get a $360 value for only $79 with spring here now. You want to get out to some of the 12 craft beer locations where you can spend $30 at each brewery, about $2, two, two craft beers at each brewery, and go hang out and check out all of these great craft beer locations. Again, 12 of them, and you can spend $30 at each brewery. That's a $360 value, but you can only get it for $79. What a savings. Go to 1075thegame.com and Click on Sweet Deals and get yourself one of our craft beer cards. Again, go to 1075thegame.com, click on Sweet Deals, and check out the craft beer card. It is back. 803-404-6100, how you can weigh in. Shane Beamer talking yesterday about the upcoming scrimmage Saturday in Preston Thorne. He talked a lot. He was on his A game. (laughs) Shane talked. He was he was ready. He had been he I felt like I felt like he had uh, been around a little bit and had to deal with some family and stuff and was ready to talk football with people. Here's Shane Beamer and we'll get Preston's thoughts about it. Shane Beamer yesterday talking about the objectives for this coming Saturday in the Gamecocks first scrimmage of the spring. Yeah, um, a lot, you know, one just guys being able to get out there and and uh, execute and be efficient without coaches on the field and and coaching every single play just letting our guys be able to get out there and play a little uh we've done a little bit of uh live tackling work um in a couple of our practices already this spring and and whatnot so but it'll be the first day where the entire day is you know tackling and playing it like a game uh, we'll have SEC officials that'll be out there on Saturday. So our guys, can we play you know, f- somewhat you know, uh, penalty-free? There's going to be penalties, but hopefully we get in that stadium and we don't have a lot of the pre-snap penalties and things like that that we can control. And then really just guys, how guys respond. And, and we talk a lot about when we go across the street into that stadium, the, our mentality and what an opportunity and blessing it is to be able to go into williams Bryce Stadium. And some people, whether... Uh, it's 80,000 people in there or a Saturday morning with about 50 people in there. A lot of guys, they just they flip a switch and they and they rise to the occasion, if you will, and uh, eager to see who really just, you know, steps up because we got some great competitive battles going on in a lot of different positions. And and um, it'll be the morning time, so the lights won't be on. But, you know, figure of speech wise, when the lights come on, who responds? And uh, that's what I'm eager to see. What all do you make of that? Let's do a little coach's translation there from Preston Thorne. Uh, can they cross the street without holding our hands, right? So we've had these babies at practice this whole time, and we've been trying to tell them, hey, guys, this is what we do when this happens. This is what we do when this happens. Now the coaches are going to be removed from the players, and the players are going to have to actually see if they can do the normal football things, i.e. getting in a huddle, getting the call, making adjustments, uh, lining up. All of that stuff that they're not necessarily having to do during practice right now because the coaches are around and they have their handprints on everything. So that's the big thing. And that's actually really a big part of 
what you're trying to figure out in your early early parts of um early parts of the spring. So that is an actually youth charge. When he says to be able to execute, can we just do the basics? Football one on one. I'm trying to think of how I wanted to word this. I was going to say, should they be there, though? Like, I, I think one thing that we haven't looked at that we're going to have to look at is really get into our roster breakdown post-spring, and is this a young team? Um, I think it was Jay Phillips who last year said something like over 50 players were freshmen, sophomores. It, it, was, it included walk-ons as well, but that it was a young team. And to say that, go, okay, what can they do? Are they a customer's? You'd like to have a team who you, where you don't ask that question during spring, that they're veteran and they know what they're doing and they're accustomed. Now, there are minor tweaks and changes that are being made. I don't know how much defensively is being changed. One area that we know is young with a redshirt freshman, with a true freshman, a redshirt freshman in Lenora Sellers, a true freshman in Dante Reno, an experienced player in Robbie Ashford, is the quarterback position. And here's what Shane Beamer had to say yesterday about the quarterbacks and if there's been any separation at that position in that battle so far uh i wouldn't say separation those guys are continuing to battle obviously when you talk about uh, going in the stadium and guys being able to separate themselves that's a position that they'll all get a lot of reps on saturday and um a lot of reps and they'll get an opportunity to kind of show how they handle operating the offense with the coaches not out there telling them everything and, and coaching every single rep uh, so I think there you know some guys will there'll be some separation on Saturday I would imagine just because how you know how we're going to set it up and, and you hope there is but there's great competition going in there a lot of those guys are getting reps and they're all competing and making each other better uh, the biggest thing Phil I would say is just one how they operate okay they're in the stadium now and it's a scrimmage game like setting with officials and everything how how, uh, you know, do can 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 guys operate? Can they run the offense and and communicate and the things that you have to do? And then certainly protecting the protecting the ball. They've done a really good job of that. As the head coach, you know, you love it when there's a lot of turnovers from a defensive standpoint because they're taking the ball away. And then you don't like it as an offensive coach or as a head coach because the offense is turning the ball over too much. And then when the offense doesn't turn it over, you're excited for the offense, but you're like, man, we got to continue to take the ball away like we've done a great job of defensively. But the last two practices, um, we've uh, we've done a really good job offensively of uh, protecting the football. I think there was one turnover today, I didn't one interception today, but it was a ball that got kind of ricocheted, bang, bang play with a receiver and a DB, and the ball popped up in the air, and, and it was a DQ Smith running to the ball and made an interception. But for the most part, the quarterbacks have done a good job of making good decisions and want to see them continue to just uh, uh, do that on Saturday for sure. Translation, sir. I told you Shane was in midseason form. <laughs> He's ready. Because, you know, if the offense does well, then the defense is not doing well. But if the defense is doing well, then the offense is not doing well. And it was a bang, bang play. And I don't know what happened. But he was running to – the defense was running to the ball. Quarterback made the right read. It just happened to go through the wide receiver. Hey, listen, man, everybody's doing great. It's all good. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean I – so is there any separation in the quarter? Yeah. That was, that was the original yeah, question. Yeah, that was the original question. He kind of went off on a tangent. Um, yeah, I do think, I do believe that maybe there's not as much separation in the quarterback room right now based on them being early. Everybody's making throws. They're making throws during seven-on-seven seven inside drill. Maybe not enough things to see that. The one thing I did think was interesting, though, is that it would be expected for Robbie Ashford to be ahead of anybody else as far as the mechanics of being a quarterback and running a team because he's old and he's been around of various offenses. And so that's fine. That's not actually something that if I were the coach, I would be judging on. I would be like, yeah, you're expected to do that. So if you can get us in and out of the offense at this point in the spring, so what? You should be able to do that. I need to see what type of plays you're making. So that's not something that I would necessarily be as um, as dependent upon making my evaluation when I'm talking about the quarterbacks. So that brings us to the next question. Let's listen to Shane Beamer from yesterday. We'll see if he gets a little wordy with this. But quarterbacks, will they be live on Saturday? I'm interested to hear. I know what Shane Beamer said, but then I'm interested to hear your opinion on this. Here's Shane Beamer yesterday talking about if quarterbacks would be live during the scrimmage, live, able to be hit, tackled, tackled to the ground. Here's what he had to say. It's a good question. Um, I was thinking about that last night, Hale. Um, I don't know yet. We've done that in the past, in the springtime and August. You know, last year we did in the scrimmages. We made uh, everyone but 
Spencer and Luke were live and we tackled and it was good for them to understand that you know you don't if the we've got five guys blocking and the defense brings a sixth guy you're going to get hit and you can't sit there and hang on to the ball so it's good for them to learn from that standpoint uh, some of those quarterbacks love it because I blew the whistle today one time and Robbie Ashford was mad at me because he didn't think there was any way that the defender would have been able to make a sat make that tackle in a real game um, and uh, Lenoris really stepped up last year in those situations where we made him live. So it's something that we'll talk about as a staff. I know that's a long answer to say, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, can we clip that, please? <laughs> just whenever I just get to rambling a little bit, so that's a long answer to say, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a very long answer. Oh, um, you said he was, he was ready to talk to somebody. <laughs> that had the feel of a person who was trapped with the family for <laughs> it was for, Easter weekend. Easter, it was and, and it just, I want to talk to the media. I want to talk football <laughs> with people. Wife doesn't let me talk football at home. I have to preface this statement by saying I played for Lou Holtz. And so everybody was live, yeah. right? And the live was was a thing. In fact, one at one point, one of our quarterbacks was we were trying to see if he was going to be able to go in the game. So Coach Holtz's solution was, well, if he can go live, <laughs> then he can play on Saturday. It's like I don't think that's a good solution. But <laughs> and also us as players, we probably should have been like, this is not great, but we was trained differently. So it was like, yeah, that, let's hit, hit him. him, hit him, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, and then Robbie Ashford talking about, oh, you blew the whistle. It wouldn't have been a sack. Get out of here. This is typical quarterback stuff talking about, yeah, he wouldn't have got me. <laughs> and meanwhile, the quarterback's always the guy that's looking to slide, always the guy that's running out of bounds, always the guy that's looking for a reason for somebody to touch him. Get out of here, Robbie. You just separated yourself. <laughs> Go back into the other room it with is, the quarterbacks. Is, yeah, is a defensive lineman when a quarterback, you could only two-hand touch him? They get so brave, though. They get so emboldened, and they just stand back there in the pocket, and they're looking around. And the threat of being live changes things a lot for quarterbacks. And I think – I don't know how you do it with some discretion. We don't want to take any cheap shots on the quarterback. We don't want to do anything to jeopardize the team. But like Shane said, just knowing that you can get hit, that changes the calculation process on how long you're going to stay in the pocket. And I think we'll we'll continue to talk about that. We'll come back into that coming up in the next hour, 803-404-6100, how you can weigh in. We'll get more into that. We'll get into some baseball coming up. Uh, midweek games. Well, Preston Thorne, he's played some baseball. He knows what the midweek games really mean. We'll get Preston Thorne's take on that. Let's listen to a little bit of Mark Kingston from earlier this week as well. You're listening to the early game.
busy morning out on the highways and probably will continue to be that way for your morning commute. I-77 northbound at Farrow Road, also at uh, Bluff Road. So accidents in both locations, Bluff and Farrow, I-77 northbound. I-126 eastbound at Greystone Boulevard, an accident there. Um, Hugey at Gervais, their uh, traffic lights are malfunctioning in downtown Columbia. Also, East Boundary Road at Percival, an accident, and I-20 westbound at Two Notch Road. The right lane is currently blocked. Lots of standing water, and there's been some real heavy rain at times, so some scattered thunderstorms yet this morning. Should be starting to clear out really by about 9 or 10 this morning, so something to look forward to. Nasty weather out there right now. But you know what? Friday morning, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. We'll be out at Charwood Golf Club, and we hope to see you. Just a few spots left for the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament. $400 a foursome. So get your team together. $400. Call and get registered today. Again, just a few spots left. 803-755-2000. We'll have breakfast from Old Timey Meat Market with onion sausage. That'll be a great way. Friday's going to be a lot of fun. You think about it. Friday, we're going to have the golf tournament. You're going to have the baseball game, South Carolina and Texas A&M. You're going to have the final four games, South Carolina and North Carolina State. And we're going to start it again all at Charwood Friday morning. And we'll start it with onion sausage. From Old Timey Meat Market. That's that's a solid start. Solid start. That is so. Just for the onion sausage alone, Old Timey Meat Market, you should come out. But again, call and get registered for the actual tournament. Eight zero three seven five five two thousand. We'll have a mimosa bar sponsored by Saki's Wine and Spirits. We'll have lunch provided for you by Firehouse Subs. It's going to be an absolute blast. We got a lot of great giveaways as well. So come on out. The one zero seven five the game spring golf tournament this Friday at Charwood. Again, it'll be a lot of fun because we'll be able to talk baseball. We'll be able to talk the final four we'll be able to talk some spring football cut up with you come on out early come on out early preston and i'll be out there broadcasting live starting at 6 a.m and we look forward to seeing you call and get registered today 803-755-2000 even gamecock larry has said he has gotten a ride to come visit us and uh, hang out so you can even meet gamecock larry as well 803-404-6100 speaking of baseball Mark Kingston talking yesterday. One of the things, or excuse me, he talked yesterday was when he talked Monday. He uh, One of the things he talked about was his biggest concern so far. Here's Mark Kingston from Monday talking about his team. Well, I want to continue to get some more out of our offense. I think our offense has more meat on the bone. I think there's some guys, you know, we've gone through some cycles where you know, three guys got hot while three guys got cold, and then, then they switched places. And you know, Petri was a, got off to a little bit of a slower start, and now he's really picked it up. And you could kind of say the same with Messina. Um, but then we have some other guys that are not quite swinging up to what their capabilities are. So what I want to continue to see is, is, is get to the point where we're hitting on all cylinders in that lineup. Um, obviously, the pitching, we're still our, our pitching decisions, and we just talked about it at length. But, you know, want to continue to evaluate where we want to go with our starters on the weekend, who we want to keep in the bullpen, who we may want to move into the rotation. Um, that part, we're still, we don't have a, we're not 100% on exactly having a handle on it. Uh, we're going to continue to give opportunities to guys and then try to make what we think is, is the best decision for how to use all the pitchers uh uh, to the best of their abilities so that it gives us our best chance for success. So I would just say more more production offensively, consistently, and then just continue to figure out the best roles for our pitchers. Tonight, uh, first pitch scheduled for 640, excuse me, first pitch scheduled for 7, pregame 645. Georgia Southern comes in 14 and 14 overall. They're 4 and 2 in the Sun Belt. Uh, the Gamecocks obviously 21 and 7. Stadium will open at 545. It is also, according to what I am reading, a bark in the park night. Oh, nice night. 
Uh, it is uh, a bark in the park night, according to the game notes that I am reading. So how about that uh, at Founders Park? It'll be on SEC Network as well. Uh, these midweek games, though, this is what, as important as it is to win conference games, the midweek games can really determine where you are at in terms of regionals and whether you're hosting or not. Yeah, I think the midweek games matter for great teams and they also matter for good teams. For great teams, as you said, it determines whether or not you're hosting, whether or not you're going to be at, at or the regional or seating. For the good teams, it helps you keep momentum as you're trying to build throughout the week. We don't know where this team as falls. Uh, the record indicates we don't, we're not on track to be we're a, a great team. So if we're going to be a good team, they have to get all of these as much as possible. They can't afford to give anything away. But the issue is, you know, around college baseball, because we're so hyper-focused on South Carolina, we may lose out that other teams also lose midweek games. Mm -hmm. I was just scrolling Twitter. LSU lost to Southern, which is a local HBCU. That's not supposed to happen, but it happens. I don't know what the feeling is down there. Mississippi State lost to Central Arkansas. It happens. Um Coastal loss to UNC Wilmington. So losses happen in the midweek. It's just we're very hyper-focused on our squad. And what we do know is that this team cannot afford to give we give away any games, especially to, as you read their record, Georgia Southern's a very average baseball team, and they need to take care of business tonight. That's that's the important part. Go out there, take care of business, get yourself, get yourself through the week and get ready for a monster series with Texas A&M. South Carolina's fine. I, I, they're ranked. I, I was just glancing. I did not see a kind of a bracketology out just yet to see where they would be projected. Obviously, as a top 25 team, an SEC top 25 team, they are they would be right there kind of on the bubble for hosting, probably being on the outside looking in, going to another regional. But you've got time to fix that. You win some games this weekend. You continue to roll along as the season is going and, and win a few more games. I think the goal for conference is to be around the 17 and 13 mark if you're 17 and 13 in conference play preston with a solid non-conference with a solid midweek schedule then you're feeling pretty good about hosting and that's what south Carolina should be aiming for here about four games above 500 in conference play but then next week by the way next week you get north carolina in that midweek game right and north carolina is good um and so to my point, 17 and 13, we know we play in a very tough conference, and the conference every weekend is going to be a battle. And so you might have to even amp up the focus on the midweek games to make sure that you take care of those things because you cannot give away any of those opportunities to add another win to your thing. But when Mark was, when, when Mark was talking, this idea of two things st stood out. The hitters not being everybody in sync at the same time. So this leads to what we've been talking about. The issue, the specific issue is being able to hit with runners in scoring position. Right. So what that means is somebody's getting on base, but the other people are not able to get them in. And that hits to what he's saying, how some people are hot and some people are not. But more concerning to me and what I would love to know is from any baseball folks is he said that they're trying to figure out the roles for the pitchers in the rotation. My question would be is, when do we need to have that figured out by? When's the, is there a drop dead date? Is there something that needs, does it need to be figured out by a specific time? I understand that teams are organic and things are always changing in motion, but when does that need to be settled? It's a good question. I don't know if you have to figure, is, has anybody really stood out? And, and I don't think, I mean, well, Tyler Pitzer was really good. Eli Jones has been really good. You know, this I think as long as everybody's on the same page, I, I would assume Jamie Bradford kind of talked about this a little bit at length, but I would think that as long as everybody really is on the same page with, hey, I'm a starter. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, Saturday, Sunday, you know, Friday. Eli Jones right now has got that Friday spot kind of locked down, locked down again. Sounds like they might go with Tyler Pitzer on Saturday this week. Sunday's to be determined. It could be Matthew Becker. It could be Dylan Eskew. Uh, they've got a few other guys in that position. But it's, it feels like the bullpen has kind of settled in with Garrett Ganey being the closer and Chris Veach kind of the, the middle reliever setup guy kind of a thing. I want to go back to the hitters for a second. It, it's interesting right now what you're seeing because – South Carolina, do you realize they lead the country in walks? 216 walks in 28 games. Second place, by the way, in the country, in the country, not the SEC, is Texas A&M. 
and South Carolina has 12 more walks than them. Ethan Petrie has been walked 29 times, which is third in the SEC. This team, it, it I almost wonder at times if they're too passive at the plate, and that's why you're having a. It's just a thought. It's it's maybe it's completely wrong. But when you see that number of walks, I wonder at times if the philosophy is becoming a little bit too passive and not aggressive enough. That's a very interesting take. Just a thought. I would love to hear. I would love to hear Coach King's take on 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 what that means because sometimes you need a guy to just take the bat off his shoulder and swing it Um, when something is when something is close. You don't want him swinging at bad pitches. That's a very interesting um, question. I would love for somebody to ask that to him to see what his thought process on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but when you see that many walks, th- that's a good thing. But I also, again, wonder if... So it's very similar. I'm thinking about uh, Lamont when he was talking about basketball. He's like, when you get a shot, shoot it. Right. You know, yes, there could be a better shot to take, maybe, but you're open. We want you to shoot it. And I wonder if that's the same thought process when they're in, in, the, in the box. Eddie Copper uh, expected to get the start tonight. Freshman right-hander, 1-0 and on the season, 3.57 ERA. Talking about roles, it feels like Eddie Copper has settled into the uh, the midweek role for South Carolina. Ty Fisher expected on the mound for Georgia Southern tonight, 4-2 and two on the season, a 2.68 ERA. He struck out 39. He's walked 11. I did not realize this until reading the notes, by the way. First time in about 13 years these two teams will play. They have not played since June the 3rd of 2011. The winning pitcher in that game for the Gamecocks won Michael Roth. Uh, 803-404-6100 will come back. Good. Michi Johnson, we'll get into him a little bit as well. You're listening to Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne. It's the early game.
Reminder, we just talked baseball. Go to 1075thegame.com and register for the Palmetto Citizens FCU Grand Slam giveaway. Every game, $25 is added to the pot, and that pot right now, $700. If a South Carolina batter hits a Grand Slam, you can win all the cash in the pot. And again, right now, that pot is $700. Just need a Gamecock batter to hit a Grand Slam, and you need to be registered. So go to 1075thegame.com, and again, register. It's the Palmetto Citizens FCU Grand Slam giveaway. Again, go to 1075thegame.com and get registered today. Meet you, Johnson went home. Man, I understand it. I'm good with it. He handled it. I think he handled it like a man. He didn't put out some Instagram post. He put out a... A video of him talking, uh, slightly unprofessional because there was a dog barking in the background, a phone going off. That's okay. A minor minor production quality issues from Michi Johnson. I think Michi Johnson handled it like a man. I have no problem uh, with how he handled it. If there's an NIL deal behind everything, okay, it is what it is. He went home, in my opinion, and I'm going to stick to this, so he is father who coaches at Garfield Heights. Uh, would be a, would have the opportunity and his family to see him play in person a little bit more. Uh, that was a storyline. I don't know if people caught that at the end of the year. First time his dad had been able to see him was against, I believe, uh, I believe it was Florida, and then they stuck around for the Tennessee game, uh, and then they caught the family was able to catch him because they were in Pittsburgh right. play. Um, I'm good with this. That is where his home is. That was his school. It didn't work out the first time. This is an opportunity for him to go and right a wrong and get one season, one season. I can't blame him for that. Also, the idea is also that they have a new coach at Ohio State. True. So it's not under the same staff. So there's totally new different things out there. If you are from a place, there, there's always a maybe a pull for you to go home. They did a really clever job of when they po- showed his post on Twitter. They had a picture of him as a baby Michi standing on the Ohio State court. And it's like, oh, man, how can I? How can I be upset? How can you be upset at that particular thing? What is interesting, though, and I think this is a very interesting swirl in how a college athletics is participating, is that the Ohio State NIL Foundation had the exclusive announcement that he was coming home. It didn't come through even his personal channels or even the school's channels. It came through their channels. So I'm sure that was part of the deal. And awesome. Sounds like another way, another way to being being creative. And they put a lot of energy energy towards that. I would say good luck, best wishes towards Michi. Um, as I've said before, the home you left isn't the home that you're going to, so things might, may or may not be different. Well, as you mentioned, I, I'll have to go back and see. Now, you, you say it's a new head coach. I believe the the person who got the job, he was the assistant, and he got promoted, Correct. which I always think is an awful idea. I, I don't I don't care that he did well coming down the stretch in the end. Like, this is not a... You're not getting a completely new system when you promote the assistant from the from Chris Holtman, who was the guy. Well, it, it it gets tricky. It gets really tricky because you were an assistant on the staff that was not being successful. And so how does he go in there to the AD and say, like, yeah, I wasn't really part of yeah. all that stuff. I mean, all of this I didn't stuff agree was... with him at all. <laughs> yeah. I didn't agree with Chris at all. Yeah. I didn't like. I was telling him all the time we were doing things wrong. Yeah, that's a really tricky situation. Then he's got to get on the phone with Chris and be like, "Yeah, man, we're just doing the same things that we've been doing." I knew, I told him it was going to work. If Chris even picks up because he's like, "Uh, what were you saying to the AD?" Uh, that's a I tough one. That's a really tricky situation. Um, but. I do believe that Michi did have a relationship, and oftentimes players may have more of a relationship with an assistant coach, and that might have been his specific guy. Who knows? Um, but that is that is tricky. I, I again, I, and I'm not. This is not sour grapes, and I'm not picking on Michi. I, I also, you know, it, hopefully they're not counting on Michi to come in and be that guy for the. He is a good. He was great in his role this year of being one of a few, if that makes sense. He, Talon Cooper, B.J. Mack, Colin Murray Boyles, the four of them, one game it might have been Michi, one game it might have been B.J., one game it might have been Colin Murray Boyles, one game it might have been Talon. I don't think you can count on Michi Johnson for 31 consecutive games or whatever it is you'll play in the regular season now. 31, I believe, is the number. I, I that he It was a great fit for him. Last year, two years ago, I should say, I thought he tried to be the guy, and even though it seemed like they got along okay, 
it, it was a battle between he and Gigi Jackson on who was the guy. This year, I felt like Michi had a good understanding with Talon and BJ, and, and then as Colin Murray Boyles developed, that Michi was the personality of the team, but those guys might be, on a given night, the guy. I wonder if Michi's prime role is as a six-man, kind of like a microwave coming to heat things up, come off the bench, provide a little bit, of, a lot of energy in, a, in an ideal situation. But you're, like you said, I don't think that's not what he. That's not what he's going to no, do. No, he's going to be the guy. He wants to average 18, 19, 20 points a game. He wants to be the guy who takes all the shots. And, again, I thought part of the reason it worked so well at South Carolina this year was because he accepted his role that one night it might be B.J. Mack. And, honestly, the, the two games really stood out to me, uh, or three games did, uh, all three were losses when he realized his team was outmanned, out athletically manned by Alabama, Auburn, and then Oregon, when he was like, all right, now I'm taking over. Unfortunately, you guys can't get it done tonight. We'll continue to talk about this as we roll through the show. Michi Johnson back at Ohio State. Good for him. I'm good with it. I'm fine with it. I'm happy for him. I think both parties benefited South Carolina and Michi Johnson, and both will move on in a better place than they originally were. Hour two on the way. It's the early game. Preston here, let me tell you about my friends at Absolute Glass, the premier glass company of the Midlands, offering auto, home, and business glass repair. So if your glass is damaged, shattered, cracked, or broken, they can handle the job. If it's a cracked windshield, that's no problem. They'll come out to your location and give you a free quote for any job. So if it's a cracked windshield, they'll replace it for you, usually for free, and they work directly with the insurance company to take away the headache. So to recap, they will come out to wherever you are, school, home, work, it doesn't matter, replace the job for you, and the insurance will take away the headache. Now, if you're looking to increase the value of your home with new windows and mirrors, Absolute Glass will take care of that for you too. Windows, mirrors, shower enclosures. I say all the time, if you can see through it, Ray and Marianne at Absolute Glass can do it. So check them out online at absoluteglassinc.com. That's online at absoluteglassinc.com.
quite a list of incidences out there, so let's get to it. In Lexington, Harmon at Laurel Street, a tree has fallen. Obviously, that's going to be causing an issue there. I-20 westbound at Two Notch Road, the right lane blocked. East boundary at Percival Road. I-126 eastbound at Greystone. I-77 northbound at exits 5 and 19. Incidents in both areas there. Trenum near uh, North Beltline Boulevard, an accident as well. And traffic lights malfunctioning, Huge at Blossom and Hardin at Gervais. So two accidents to be mindful of. Up and Adam, as we get you going on a kind of nasty Wednesday morning, but it'll it will clear up here later on today. Should be able to get some baseball in as we get going for South Carolina and Georgia Southern tonight. Reminder: pregame six forty-five right here, one zero seven five. The game first pitch scheduled for seven o'clock, but it is it's not nice. It's not nice uh, out there uh, this morning, Preston Thorne. Uh, yeah, it actually is nicer than it was, I think, when we came in. I think yeah, we yeah, that came is in, correct. Came in during the crescendo of the of the storm, so maybe that means it's getting better. Hopefully that means it's getting better. Preston reminds me a little bit of we had a German shepherd uh, when we lived out on the farm. And so, you know, tough, strong, hated storms, like literally cowered at storms. And we would try to get him to the basement because, you know, we'd see a tornado coming. So you try to get him to the basement at the farmhouse and... And uh, he didn't even want any part of the stairs, you know, but was, like, terrified of the storm, too. So Preston strikes me as kind of that German shepherd, a tough guy, lovable guy, but just does not like the storms. Don't like the storms. Not a fan. Oh. Not a fan. This is the rough part of the year for you, boy. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I tend to <laughs> – I have no problem fixing a drink and, like, sitting there in a window and watching a good storm. Don't you with- just fix a drink just to, you know, file your nails? I don't ever file my nails. I have someone do that for me. Of course you, know? you do. Uh, I have people do. I have I have people who do that. What a great statement! Me. I have people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, wow. Yes, and a, yes, I do. I, I do have a drink fixed for me when I go do that. Uh, we'll go down a path of that in a few weeks. Eight oh three four zero four. There's just a whole spa thing. I'm like, hmm. What, what's he got in his wallet? Oh, hey, Bill, that man card in there? I'll be taking that from you. you got to look good, Jen. You, no, you got to take care of yourself. You got to you just go <laughs> okay, out there. Okay, I got to go. You, you, can't just, you can't just go out there all scraggly nails and feet. You got to gotta take care of yourself. Got to work on you with that. 803-404-6100. <laughs> it's a, might have a pedicure coming up in a few weeks. You don't know. You don't know. It's, it's almost sandal season. <laughs> Preston. Please, can you count for me on one hand how many times you've gotten a pedicure? I can, actually. Ah, that's that's the new thing. (laughs) And really, I'm seriously, I'm not against it for guys because, you know, hey, why not? But it's just more fun to tease you because I think you would probably, they would probably have to stop you from picking out your polish. Why would they stop me? (laughs) Uh, It'd be like Caleb Williams. Yeah. I, I, I look or the good. whole North Carolina. What was that Duke? The whole Duke team. What's the, what's the song? I look pretty. <laughs> 803-404-6100. Uh, growing up, Preston, high school all-star games, was the McDonald's All-American game a big deal to you? Uh, I would say, yeah, for maybe a short period. Um, yeah, 
I don't know if it's because I, I, I'm asking you because I yes. don't know if it's because I was in basketball. I think if you was more in, inclined to basketball, but I do kind of remember the whispers of like Kevin Garnett and South Carolina, and that's when it really started being on my mind. I think when I think about reco- that recollection, like I, I'm just thinking, I I played AAU basketball with Roe Howe, who was in it. It was in the all in the All American, uh, excuse me, in the McDonald's All American game. It was it was a big deal. Now, I don't know if that's because again I played at Lakes in the high school and just being in basketball and and having gone to a few AAU tournaments, I. There were guys I had seen at my age, and then as I kind of moved forward and and was into some some recruiting and stuff would pay. And this is pre, like scouting and everything that would take place. I just wonder if it has the same relevance, or if I'm just older, and and South Carolina didn't have a player in because the reason I bring this up last night was the McDonald's All American game. And that used to be something I knew the date of every time. I happened to notice it was on last night. I didn't watch any of it. Again, I was into the Cubs and the Rockies. But Cooper Flagg, the number one overall player who's uh, heading to Duke, only had eight points last night. I just didn't know if anybody still gets into the McDonald's All-American game because you and I have had these discussions about All-Star games now. The NBA is is very close to throwing in the towel in the All-Star game. Very close. Adam Silver basically is admitted now yeah, we can't do anything to make it a competitive game. I mean, he a couple weeks ago basically was like, I, we may have to go the NFL route of just having skills competitions and maybe three on three games. So it, he is Adam Adam Silver is fed up and is basically throwing his hands up, being like, I I can't, I understandably cannot make these guys go out and play hard and make it competitive when they're in fear of getting hurt. For, and we're already got guys doing load management in actual games. Yeah, and that, that's a whole different conversation. Um, but it is, it is an exhibition. I think the McDonald's All American maybe loses a little bit of luster because of like everything else. We see a lot of these people in the same places all the time, where they're at big AEU tournaments or traveling. So the idea of getting these stars in one place, the mystery behind some of these players, maybe not as much as the, much as they had. But obviously, you know. I, and I saw a graphic yesterday. South Carolina's had 13 McDonald's All-Americans. They had to, had it broken down by state. I wonder if you can think about those. We won't do that now. Um, but on the women's side, obviously we had Joyce Edwards playing in uh, in the McDonald's All-American game. And that led me to a question. Geographically, culturally, however you want to decide, because I'm working on a take here, is Camden, Columbia... I don't consider it to be, but I'm on the, I'm on the, f- being in Lexington. Is Lexington, Columbia? I don't consider it to be. Okay. I'm just working on, I'm working on this take here because I think in this very, how interesting the amount of talent that has come out of Columbia that Don Staley has been able to obviously recruit. And it also got me to thinking of when we was watching, when I was watching Juju Watkins play for Southern Cal how fortunate can you be if you just happen to have one of these game-changing generational talents that lives within your bounds? Yes, you can recruit to other these places, but Southern Cal is nowhere near this conversation of the Elite Eight without just happen to have Juju Watkins from Compton, California, right in the middle of their backyard. And so I'm wondering, yes, Dawn Staley was amazing. She was coaching. But if the Cosmo has not lined up where Asia Wilson is just right in their backyard, how much of this stuff actually happens? It's just fascinating, fascinating me. And so that gives me to Joyce Edwards, who's their most recent five-star. And I'm wondering, would Joyce Edwards be considered just an in-state recruit, or is that a Columbia recruit? I go in-state. Uh, okay. But again, that's because I, I say that living in Lexington, Camden is... Camden is about an hour away okay. from where I'm at. Mm-hmm. So making that drive from Columbia is different. You might have somebody, um, you might have somebody. So just like I say that Lexington, getting to Lexington now is a is a trip Yeah, for, from Columbia, like trying to either go down 378 number one or whether you're on the interstate. But no, I, to me, they're, they're separate areas. I would say Camden, Joyce Edward. I also will say this, Xavier McLeod from Camden. Was he an in-state recruit or a Columbia guy? Oh, he's moved on. 
He was an in-state guy. He was just an in-state guy that didn't pan out. Yeah. Who? Joy, exactly. Yeah, that, whom? yeah I, I think it completely depends on the level of success as to whether we claim them. I mean, right. Flat out. As a Columbia, as a mm-hmm. Midlands, a Midlands kid. I guess, I guess Midlands, if you, or is that Midlands? If you say, if you say what Midlands, does that mean? Midlands to me encompasses Lexington and Irmo and Dutch Fork and Chapin. I'm on my side of town. Northeast. Blythewood. Blythewood. Yeah. Well, I well I remember when I first moved out to Blythewood, there was nothing out there. Um, it wasn't as much out there as developed. And I remember the the kids used to talk about <laughs> talk about going to Columbia, and it was kind of like going to town. It was like, yeah. oh, okay, that's a whole different place. And because of you, then Blythewood exploded. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, that's I was on the fringe. Now I, I was early. I was early on early on that one. So it just got me to thinking. With Joyce Edwards, obviously, how fortunate is it to have another five star recruit, another McDonald's All American, be right here in your backyard, where you can continue this uh, this legacy for for Don Staley and company. It it's um even G.G. Jackson. It's just the same conversation. I'm just wondering how the how does that the fate of that happening? I, I mean, we I th- I don't think I don't think it's gotten the publicity that it should. As you bring this up, I'm, we're doing this. This is unscripted, off the cuff, and I say this because I don't think it's gotten the publicity when you think of Malaysia Fulwali again, who was in the the McDonald's All Star Game. Um, you you mentioned Ashlyn Watkins. I didn't, but yes, Ashlyn Watkins again uh, uh, was in the McDonald's. Also, you, I, am I am I thinking correctly? Is this three in a row? Joyce Edwards, if we call her a a Midlands Columbia kid, is that three in a row that I'm thinking of? Watkins, uh, Watkins, Fulwali, and now Edwards. You know, uh, you mentioned Asia Wilson, who has come through. Um, I don't remember if Asia Dozier was a McDonald's All-American or not. The amount of talent, you know, Don Staley's an incredible coach. It doesn't matter. You're right. But if you think the amount, I mean, do we understand, have we ever sat back and really thought about the amount of talent that has come through this this state? But in particular, as you just said, circle it off on a 60-mile radius within an hour of come, the amount of talent who's come through here to help propel that program to where it's at today. Yeah, and I, I just think that's fascinating to me because you have to have all of these things working in together. And as again, it clicked for me when I was watching Southern Cal, and that team has not been on the radar as far as women's basketball until 18 years ago when Juju Watkins is born and she lives in Compton, California, and she happens to choose to stay home because I remember Dawn was in on that recruiting early, and it was sort of like, oh, that's not going to happen. She's going to end up staying home. And uh, just how fortunate a program can be that the person that changed the program could be within the radius of your of your school. And I, I think somebody can correct me, but I believe another one was Elena Coates from Dutch Fork, mm-hmm. who was a McDonald's All-American. It It's... The run of talent, and, you know, it's it's interesting always to coincide when a program, when an athletic program takes off along with local talent because, you know, everybody kind of attributes the Steve Spurrier run to it wasn't, it wasn't Midland's talent, but it was in-state talent in Gilmore and Clowney and Jeffrey and Lattimore, A.J. Can. Uh, you go with that, Talasia Cooper? Yeah, I said she, she obviously transferred, but she was from... Where, where are we going to put Turbyville? Where does Turbyville come That's not Midlands, obviously. Turbyville is out there. And that's how I would describe it. <laughs> if, you're from, if you're from Turbyville, you went to East Clarendon, that's out there. I don't even know where East Clarendon is. Oh, it's... it's, it's rural Columbia. Rural, rural area. Anybody from East Clarendon, check in, please. Um, but yeah, another McDonald's All-American. and was right along the lines and just within a very concentrated time and space. I just think it's, it's fascinating to me. And it's something that's, uh, you know, obviously you have to have the coaching pedigree. Obviously you have to have everything in place. But it's just a fascinating how all of these players were in these local areas to prov- make what's happening now. It's it's crazy. It really is. If you sit back and, again, I think we've glossed over it uh, because we just say, oh, Dawn's a great coach. Dawn's, she is. And she is. And they've, but... landed, and they've landed, obviously, the Aaliyah Bostons, and they've gone outside of the state and landed, you know, the Bree Bills and so forth and so on, all these other great players that are, are Raven Johnsons, and you get the point. But you think about what she has had locally to build off of as well. It's, it's really amazing. 803-404-6100, Gamecock fan on our live stream says, Preston, would not Somerville or Goose Creek be or Mount Pleasant be considered Charleston area? 
that's that's very you're now you're thinking like I'm thinking. Yes, kind of, but no, depending on who you talk to. You know, because I would always, you know, you would get people would go out of town and be like, Yeah, I'm from Charleston, and you'd be like, Where are you from? Somerville. No, that's not Charleston. I'm from Somerville, you know. But is that considered Charleston esque? I don't know. Plus Columbia has the sprawl thing going for it. And so I always just wonder, and I'm, you know, there's the geographic aspect of it, but also, you know, Camden's a different place than Lexington. Lexington's a different place than Irmo. It's a different place than Blythe. All these places are very much very different. 803-404-6100 is how you can weigh in if you want to so choose to do so. We'll get back into some spring football as well. Yeah, interesting discussion. McDonald's All-American game last night. Spring football. New coaches, according to Preston Thorne. We'll talk a little bit about that. You're listening to the early game.
Talk about a busy morning with uh, rain that we have gotten. Fallen tree in Lexington, Harmon Street at Laurel. Also, the right lane is blocked. I-20 westbound at Two Notch Road. Still working east boundary road at Percival. Traffic lights malfunctioning in downtown Columbia in two locations. Uh, Hugie at Gervais and also Hugie at Blossom Street. So areas both impacting uh, traffic flow. I-20 eastbound at Longs Pond Road, I-77 northbound at Farrow and Trenum near Beltline Boulevard. So be careful. The rain should be clearing out in the next couple of hours, and that's good news. Looking for a high today of about 74, 63 on Thursday, 65 with sun on Friday. You might have heard it in one of those commercials, but a reminder, the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament is just two days away out at Charwood Golf Club. Come on out and join us. We've only got a few spots left, so this is one of the last days to register. 803 $400 a foursome. 10 a.m. shotgun start. We'll be out there broadcasting early on from 6 to 9, obviously, so you can come out and join us. We'll have onion sausage from Old Timey Meat market we'll have a lot of great things going on as well mimosa bar sponsored by Saki's wine and spirits and of course firehouse subs will be providing lunch so i'm looking forward to all of that we want to see you go ahead and get signed up get registered today call charwood today 803-755-2000 is how you can register 400 dollars for foursome again 10 a.m shotgun start that is this friday april the 5th out at charwood golf club I think we've got a sporty sports question real quick. Anonymous texter weighs in. This is a thinker. This is a good question. How much of the talent in Columbia or Midlands is a result of having Dawn Staley here? She's a legend. I'm curious that that has influenced young girls to want to play basketball and be the best. Sporty sports right there. This is a butterfly effect type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a very good question. So the answer is yes. Obviously, it has affected the the interest, the amount of people who are willing to go out and play. People have always played, but there's been an overemphasis in that. You can see this effect maybe more, more startlingly so in Iowa. I'd be interested to see what that effect's going to be maybe 10 or 12 years down the I, I road. Don't, I don't think it's going to be the same. I think that's a great question about the impact of Dawn Staley because she's done it for so long. What is it? She came in 07 and built this thing up. So if you do 17 years, that's what you're seeing about these young women become here at about this time, the growth of it. Yeah, I think that's a, that's an excellent point. Also, the idea that the games were accessible. These women probably grew up going to games, seeing them being successful, seeing them women. As we said, it's 2024 now. 2017, seven years ago. So a lot of these women were young, young, burgeoning athletes at the time. So that makes a lot of sense. And, it, you know, success begets success. However, also, uh, s- that could be true. However, the thing that Malaysia Fuwali has and Ashlyn Watkins have and Joyce Edwards has that doesn't come from influence from Dawn. That came from <laughs> the spirit world. Got them the athletic ability well, to be those people. But like what Joyce Edwards, Joyce Edwards is also a really good soccer player. And so like with Malaysia or like with Ashlyn Watkins, like what would, would have Ashlyn Watkins maybe filtered more to volleyball? Would Malaysia maybe have filtered more to Great a soccer point. or Great something point. something different? Because they brought up yesterday, they brought up during a conversation yesterday that Andrew Reese was a 
a two-time volleyball state champion, and obviously basketball was the thing, but if maybe volleyball was more prevalent in that region, let's say she was growing up in Nebraska where volleyball is really right. taken off, does she choose that route? I think that's a very fascinating conversation to have. Sporty sport talk. I very love it. Good. I can love I, it. Can I just say I really like Malaysia Full Wiley, I, and for being, I don't want to say just a freshman, but – she, there's just a maturity about her and kind of how she approaches some of the conversations that they'll have. The fact that she signed her shoes, you know, and, and gave them, like, she, she just seems to be embracing it. And I, I'm just really excited for her, the NIL, de- NIL deals that she's gotten. It's, yeah, it, it's going to be exciting. You think the Midlands coaches gave Malaysia the same talk that Kim Mulkey gave to uh, Caitlin Clark? Uh, her last game, like, yes, glad to see you Aaron, go. Aaron, Aaron Lucas, I think, <laughs> said as much. If I think, and like, I think he's also giving Joyce Edwards the same discussion. <laughs> see you later. It's been real. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Like our buddy Aaron is basically <laughs> admitted, like, yeah, I, no, thank you. Please leave. Stop. It's been glad. Glad to I, see you go. I, I will say this, too. I, and I was having a discussion, and now I cannot think of, of who I was discussing it with. Uh, it, was a, it was a high school athletic director, high school coach in the last – a uh, few weeks, uh, just about the evolution. I don't think it was Chris Deering. I, I think it was. I, I want to say. I want to say it was with Dustin Curtis, uh, the athletic director, and our good buddy at, at Lexington. Uh, but we were talking about the potential for the NIL to go to the high school ranks, and also what that means and what that does in terms of these young people. Young, because you're talking about Malaysia understanding her place in the public eye. You're now basically turning 15 and 16 year olds into business people, and they have to understand their their perception via social media in the public around their town. And I, I do think Malaysia understands that really well because of her upbringing and what they've done out over at Keenan. I, I'm familiar with Zach Norris extremely well from basketball and stuff, but that whole community raising her to be to this point where as a freshman she's able to handle the spotlight like she is. Yeah, I think that's very fascinating. And obviously with her being so successful so early, um, this is not new to her, but on the level that it is, it is it is it's something that they've like I think the you said the right word, they've groomed her into this position. And, and we've seen this. And I'll be honest, it's not, you know, we're we're obviously talking about the women's side of things, but it's the it's the, the boys, too, the, the the high school boy. I mean, you know, you look out at, over at Cam Scott at Lexington and, and had he been able to receive NIL money as a high school player. I'm trying to think off the top of my head who the kind of the top player. I'm thinking of uh, of A.J. Brand over at Irmo right now, uh, the star quarterback who South Carolina has offered as a safety in the 2025 class. I think, I think it's Will Wilson at Richland Northeast who's committed to North Carolina State. Um, you think about these prospects that are coming up, and the likelihood in the next four to five years that NIL will be in the high schools here where our state will legislate where high schoolers can go out and sell themselves and still keep their amateurism. Yeah, and it's a, it's a new development. We'll, we'll see how, how there will be unintended consequences, obviously, but for some of these people who have really been big draws for community, it can be something really interesting. I always think about, I always bring up the conversation of, you know, Devin Downey and Chester and yeah. how that gym used to be packed and w- what a marketing machine that was for that community. So, yeah, it's a, there'll be unintended consequences that most some of us won't like, but it's a new development. 803-404-6100. Thank you, Anonymous Texter, oh, for that. Oh, man, great question. That was, you get the show. Appreciate we, it. We got the dun dun dumb music. That's when you know we're doing something big. We'll, we'll actually get into spring football when we come back, talk about Joe D. Camillus and the impact learning process with Joe D. New special teams guy. Not, he's not quite as entertaining as Pete Limbo, but Still a very good coach, and we'll, we'll talk about that. 803-404-6100. You're listening to The Early Game. Bill Gunner for Love Chevrolet. It is springtacular. A little nasty today. But you know what? You can still go and check out all the great deals over at Love Chevrolet during the springtacular sale. Love Chevrolet has been in business for over 60 years, taking care of families here in the Midlands. And they've done it with honesty, with integrity, by not selling above MSRP, making sure that when you go purchasing a brand new car, truck, or SUV, that you're getting the very best deal 
possible. And that's why they have continued to take care of the Midlands for over 60 years because of the way they treat you, the consumer. So go visit Love Chevrolet, I-26 and Harbison between Lowe's and Frankie's Fun Park, or you can visit them on the web. Check out their springtacular sale because those are the times to get the savings at Love Chevrolet to go along with the absolute best selection. I-26 and Harbison between Lowe's and Frankie's Fun Park. Get out to Love Chevrolet and together, let's drive. Still quite a few things to contend with out there this morning. The fallen tree in Lexington, Harmon near Laurel. I-20 westbound at Two Notch Road. The right lane is blocked. Traffic lights malfunctioning uh, hugely there at uh, Gervais Street. I-20 eastbound at Longs Pond Road, an accident there. Also, I-126 eastbound at Greystone Boulevard. I-77 northbound at Faro and Trenum at North Beltline Boulevard. Nasty conditions should be moving out later this morning, leaving us with a high of 74. 63 for the high tomorrow, 65 on Friday. But some scattered rain in the Midlands yet. Some standing water on the highways. It's uh, 69 on the early game.
Reminder, the craft beer card is back. 12 locations, $30 at each location. It's a $360 value for only $79. Get yours today. Go to 1075thegame.com and click on Sweet Deals for your craft beer card. Again, it's 12 craft beer locations across town, $30 at each location. That is a $360 value, and you can get it for only $79. Go to 1075 the game dot com click on sweet deals and purchase your craft beer card today spring is here you want to enjoy a nice craft beer sitting outside most of those locations have outside seating no better time than now to go to 1075 the game and pick up your craft beer card again click on the sweet deals tab on 1075 the game dot com let's get out to the love chevy phone lines real quick having a discussion about dawn staley and really her role in the development of maybe midlands basketball uh donnie joining us this morning on the phone lines. Donnie, how you doing this morning? What's on your mind? I'm all right. I just uh, wanted to ask It's a double-sided question. One is, how long did it take Dawn Staley to build the program before she had consecutive players reach the next level? And then secondly, with the NIL coming to play, I think it's going to take Dawn kind of out of the question because it's not going to be, oh, I want to go play for her because she's a great person. It's going to be, oh, I'm going to go to Iowa or I'm going to go to Nebraska or I'm going to go somewhere else because they're going to pay me the most money just to show up and play. That's the love of the sport is, I, I mean, I'm against the NIL with the way they're doing it now. I think that they should compensate them, but not to where they're making millions and millions of dollars coming straight into college. I just don't think that's right. Yeah, I appreciate the phone call, Donnie. Uh, number one, you know, you, you look you look at what she did. I don't know what people remember way back. I think it was 2010, 2011, maybe 2009. She got the young lady out of uh, Texas, Kelsey Bone, who I believe was the number two player. Only stuck around for a year and ended up transferring back to Texas A&M. Couldn't quite handle uh, the coaching that Dawn was providing at the time. Yes. Um, but, you know, you look at you look at what she was able to do and build. Dawn has always been an elite recruiter. Coach Taylor has always been an elite recruiter, and that's that's really because of her reputation as a player, as an as an Olympic gold medal winner, just everything about her. Yeah, well, if you think about, and and that's absolutely true. But if the money equalizes the game, the players are still going to have to want to go do play for somebody or someone they want to play for and it's just if we're going to look at it as a job which is not not necessarily apples to apples but money can be equal but then there's still going to be other factors in making your decision and i would argue that once this is in play that's going to be even more of a reason why you would go want to play for uh, Dawn because she's going to provide you with opportunities. She's going to show you how to navigate the world as a professional, as she's done for a lot of these young women. She's going to take care of them, provide them a safe space to grow. And so I think her value, even in the NIL world, is maybe even more uh, prominent because of all those things she can offer these young women. Who else would you... Dawn has done very well for herself. Who else would you want to go learn the business of basketball from? I, I don't know the uh, the financial aspect of it. I, I'm, I'm not going to pretend I know what's going on at Alabama in terms of NIL. There are, there especially this year, there was a lot of rumors, if you will, consensus that at Alabama, the NIL was not all that large that that nil and it has not been a large factor in kids choosing alabama preston if you remember that like that was an interesting thing is that kids were going to play for nick saban not so much the nil and that there was a i don't want to say again a rumor but if you remember when texas a&m had that mega class with all that money that part of it was nick saban basically hey we don't have the money to compete with texas a&m and maybe seeing the writing on the wall. Now, obviously, he's still pulling four- and five-star recruits, but much like Don Staley, he was pulling them because he is Nick Saban, and he has a system that sends you to the NFL. There was a great, there was a great article um, with Tahina Powpow when she entered the transfer portal. She was trying to figure out what she was going to do, and she was hearing from some people, and it was just like recruiting calls. However, when the Don Staley called, over, called her, you know, her coach was like, hey, Don Staley wants to talk to you. She's like, who mm -hmm. pulls over to the side of the road and has this conversation very much different than any other coach right. from around the country that's calling you. So there, there is still an impact on how that, how that plays and, out. And let's be honest again, NIL and the women's game is going to still be very, it's, it's going to be limited to, 
I don't know, the top eight, top ten, top 12 players maybe, and it's still not going to be. Malaysia Fulwali is going to get paid, but that's because she signed national brands, not local deals. Uh, her money is coming going to come from Red, Red was it Red Bull, uh, from uh, – uh, curry brand, stuff like that, as opposed to any kind of local deals. 803-404-6100. Uh, yesterday, spring practice. New coaches. New coaches. One of those new coaches is Joe D. Camillus. And yesterday, Shane Beamer was talking about Joe D. Camillus and the process of learning with him. Here's what Shane Beamer had to say. It's been a, uh, a learning process for sure, what he coaches, what he teaches, what he wants. And then we've tried to marry, you know, a lot of the stuff that we did here previously with Pete. Uh, there's things when I met with Joe and, and, and when we hired Joe that I talked about, you know, look, I, I'm a big believer in this, you know. I want to continue to call it this, whether it be a team or a technique or a scheme or whatever it might be. But for the most part, I want him to be able to, you know, I hired him for a reason. And I want him to be able to implement him, his system. And there's certainly, there's a lot of carryover, but there's a lot of things um, um, technique-wise that are a little bit different as well. Meetings, as I mentioned before, are intense. The practice field's intense. And um, the, compet the competition out there is, is really high and intense. So it's been great, certainly high energy. I think they've connected well with Joe. He's really done a good job of connecting well with them. It's great being able to, you know, he can show, okay, we're doing this drill today, and here's Aaron Donald from the L.A. Rams doing the same drill on field goal block, or here is so-and-so on this kickoff cover drill that we're going to do today or whatever it might be. So being able to show NFL practice clips of here's the pros doing it and here's what we do has been good. And I think it's been a good transition. We've probably done a little bit more, um, not less drill work. We still do a lot of drill work, but probably a little bit more just 11 on 11 work in the spring. And a lot of guys are getting reps and it's really going to be good for our just overall development, the amount of guys that are getting reps in, in a team type setting, 11 on 11 setting. Thoughts on that? <laughs> a lot. Again, <laughs> <laughs> the main thing that I've talked about before with all of these new coaches, I know we're really focused on the players and what this guy's doing in the open competition, but I have to keep reminding everybody that we have a brand new staff in place. And the thing that Shane talked about was marrying up te terminologies, marrying up schemes, marrying up ideas. We have all of these coaches coming from these different places you may call it this, I may call it that. It may be, I may call it X, you may call it Y. Those are the conversations that have to get ironed out throughout the spring. And so a lot of what he said about, about Jody's process and about what Shane wants, they're going to have to figure those things out. And let's face it, we've been spoiled here for the past three years with Pete Limbo because majority of the country's fan bases does not care, nor can they name their special teams right. coach. This is the thing that here, and that'd be the best case scenario for us. Let's go back to not knowing our special teams coach. Everything's normal. We don't hear from them. They don't make any plays. They don't do anything wrong. It's just another. That's the way it is a majority of the country. Worst case scenario, the special teams coach is probably like the the umpire. Like we don't want to notice them. Right. Just just do your job. And if we don't know your name, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Nobody's, you know, nobody's fumbling punts or kickoffs or all good. we're not having our stuff blocked. Yeah, good job. Good job. That's what that's what he wants. So we'll see how long it takes him to get to that point. It'll it'll be uh interesting again to to see if there's the creativity. And I I would assume so, but you just go back to the fake punt, uh, which game was I think it was the Tennessee game that they ran where it was almost a pick play, if you will, with Xavier Leggett on the outside and and Kai Kroger throwing the ball. I, look. I can't believe that's all Pete Limbo. I can't believe that's, I mean, Shane's been around special teams game quite some time, too. I, I have to believe there's some. And also, I'll say, because Pete Limbo's at Buffalo and not, say, at, like, Wake Forest or somewhere locally where I can also see Shane and Pete having a weekly Monday phone call and, hey, what are you, what are you doing up there? <laughs> what, what's your... But see, that, you got, there, the slight issue with that is this. It's very much so like uh, I taught high school and then there's elementary school teachers. We both teach. We don't live in the same worlds. When I walk into an elementary school classroom and there's bulletin boards and balloons <laughs> and, you know, candy and wrappers, that's cool. And that's the way Joe D feels. He's a professional special team right. guy. All of this fireworks, I don't know if he's here for this. 
Joe. So when Shane comes in, he's like, hey, Joe, you want to run a pick play on third <laughs> down? He's like, ah. <laughs> I don't know about this. I don't know about that. I just want to punt the ball. 803-404-6100. We might have stumbled across a new way to define being old. We'll we'll discuss that a little <laughs> bit when we come back. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner. She's Jen Jensen. It's the early game. There is a lot of rain uh, tonight or last night, a lot of rain this morning. How has your roof held up? Did you have any leaks? Were you a little worried about it? If so, it's time to call Mid-State Roofing. Even at 745 a.m., whether you're in Myrtle Beach, Florence, maybe you're here in Columbia, Mid-State Roofing has a 24-hour-a-day seven-day-a-week call center that's ready to help you with your needs and get you a maintenance contract, 803-356-1919. You'll speak with someone right now this morning if you're experiencing an issue, and today might have created a few issues. And guess what? With summer thunderstorms on the way, there's going to be more issues. Mid-State Roofing has been the leader in the roofing industry, the roofing and waterproofing industry, for nearly 30 years, and they're ready to help you this morning. So give them a phone call, 803 803- 356-1919 or you can visit them online midstateroofing.com if you've got a leak let midstate roofing take a peek Reminder, baseball tonight right here at 107.5. The game, 645 pregame, 7 o'clock first pitch. The Gamecocks and Georgia Southern set to play each other. Rain expected to move out later on this morning around lunchtime, 1 o'clock, so should be no problem getting the game in. I believe the weather is expected to get up into about the mid-60s, so not a 
not a cold day, Preston Thorne, but a uh, a day maybe. Make, take a towel with you. Maybe wipe off the seats. Maybe a little po- less pollen today because of uh, the because of the rain. Yeah, unfortunately, I've been sitting here in uh, in wet clothes this morning because I had to come in, in in the monsoon, and I didn't think it was appropriate. HR might be calling me if I took my pants off. So <laughs> we had uh, you know just been wet pants all day. I I, I thoroughly appreciate mm-hmm. you not uh, not doing that. That uh, thank you. We'll we'll discuss. Not Preston's pants, but mm-hmm. age and getting through the rain here in uh, just a second. We will discuss that. Coming up tomorrow morning, we'll have our uh, chop, ho- chop House Talk, our Atlanta Brave segment sponsored by Carolina Turfgrass and Landscape Supply. Yesterday, they dropped a game 3-2, to two, Preston, to the White Sox. They'll be back in action tonight looking to close out that series, looking to win that series, I should say. Uh, again, yesterday, 3-2 to two loss. A.J. Minter took the loss for the Braves, and today they will have a getaway game, 2-10 p.m. Spencer Strider on the mound for the Braves. Uh, Major League Baseball TV update that I purchased the Braves were in Chicago last night and still blacked out. Now I have some decisions to make as to whether I'm going to continue this free trial or not. Oh, whether you just even going to continue the free trial? Well, no, a free trial is free. It's seven days, right? Uh, you're going to give it to the end. What would change? What would, if, if you had to make a decision right now? I would actually probably keep it. Okay. I'm probably leaning toward keeping it. I think the question is, do I want to just pay the like the twenty nine ninety nine for this month and just play it out, just play it on out, go ahead and pay the hundred and fifty dollars for the year and just say that I have it because I enjoyed last night sitting outside, grilled out some hot dogs, uh, enjoyed enjoyed watching. I was watching the Cubs again play last night, Cubs and uh, Rockies. So thoroughly enjoyed that. Right. And that that might be the question is do I maintain that or am I just in a baseball? Mode? But again, doing chop chop house talk uh, tomorrow with the Braves, kind of keeping up with things, keeping up with former Gamecocks that are out there and what they're doing might might be kind of worth it to see where it goes. Okay. But Major League Baseball, it, that is the thing. I I. I and we'll talk about getting older in just a second. Thank you. Steve finally sends in a good text message. Steve never sends in a good text message, but he finally has got one. He tells me it's currently 71 degrees outside, so that means the temperature will get higher than the, the mid-60s today. So good news. Steve finally with some factual good text message this morning. Uh, normally we we don't get much sense from him. Uh, 803-404-6100. But back to this. I think as I get older, yeah, sitting and, and relaxing outside and watching a baseball game is the way to enjoy the summer. It's great, it's great background noise. You just hear things. You, you know, you hear the, the, they're talking. You hear the pop of the mitt, little base hit here and there, checking on the score. It's a, it's a good time for sure. Uh, our buddy Anthony uh, on our live stream, big Pittsburgh fan, uh, he has got to be celebrating a little bit right now. The Pirates five and zero. I. Wish I would have jumped on this right before you said this. So I did some reading, and apparently the Pirates have a chance to do some interesting things this year, which totally took me by surprise because I just assumed they were terrible. Yeah. So, cool. Good for them. Uh, the Colorado Rockies, 1-5. The Miami Marlins are winless at 0-6. The Mets are winless at 0-4. Uh, the Oakland A's are being the Oakland A's at 1-5. Uh, you get the point. We'll do more baseball talk. We'll we'll do a lot more baseball talk. I got the uh, Mets finishing worse than the A's. Mark it down. Oh. Save that one. That's a hot one. Mark it down. We'll come back to that. Uh, Preston, during the break, we were discussing with Terry Ford getting through the rain. You, th- I, I told you, uh, my at 41, not that I'm very old, I have just accepted now if it's raining, I don't run through the rain anymore to get inside. And you said that's a business decision. That is a, I've made a, an executive decision in my life. I will not injure myself running through the rain. Uh, that, that's probably the smart thing to do because it's slippery. There's puddles, a lot of hazards. You don't want to fall. Is it even worth? From a scientific perspective, too, I do believe I've understood that, yeah, if you run, you get more wet than you do if it's not, you know, if you don't run. So it's probably just as well just walk. Just yeah, get there. I've heard this before. I feel like that's. Uh, I feel like if you just say something to say scientific perspective yeah. in front of it, and that's what I say. I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Don't know. If I feel like true. a lot of people have heard. That. I, I don't know. 
I mean, even if I'm a good ways away from the door, which that, that I've just given up on running through the rain, the, the odds of slipping and landing awkwardly and sustaining some kind of significant injury have increased, and I would rather just – I'll, I'll suffer – being coming in soaked or wet and I, I'm I stink like it is an understatement to say I'm bad at remembering to take an umbrella somewhere yeah that's a that's a tough one to call that's a tough one to do all the time I, I generally do not pay attention to the weather very often I think that's a luxury that I have but um also when you talk about slipping the amount of hazards that as you get older, you just see everywhere. I'm like, I got to wipe my feet because this floor might be slippery. Or I don't want to take that. Look at that step right there. That might let me hold on to this railing. It's like, what? what is going That's on? That's what's man? happening. <sighs> That's where we're going. Down wow. that path, Preston. How'd that, how'd that, that happen? Welcome quick? to the club. <laughs> got to be careful stepping off the curb. Holding railings. Rolled an ankle. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you be careful. No, like this morning, I was just like, nah. I got my computer in my arm. I got my coffee and my water. We're not running anywhere. Yeah, we'll that's... just we'll get to we'll get to the door when we get to the door. So 803-404-6100. How you can uh, weigh in if you want to this morning. Uh anonymous texture said it was on Myth Myth Buster. Myth Busters. Myth Busters. Mm-hmm. It's gotta be true. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> of course. Uh, Clinton weighing in says, I have the MLB subscription free through T-Mobile, and I can't watch the Braves either. I only use it to watch the last few inning remaining Gamecocks in the background. There you go. That's kind of the way to do it. We'll continue talking about that. Get back into some spring football. The numbers are out on Iowa and LSU as well. My goodness, we'll talk about that. It's the early game.
All right, still can be kind of sloppy out there. A little bit of standing water, so do be careful. I-77 northbound at Bluff Road, an accident in the median. I-126 eastbound at Greystone Boulevard, an accident there. Traffic lights still malfunctioning. Hugey at Blossom Street. And uh, Fallen Tree, Harmon Street near Laurel in Lexington could be still causing a problem. But this rain will get out of here a little bit later this morning, left with a high of 74. And for the next couple days after that, we'll be in the low to mid 60s. But 69 right now, still some scattered rain in the Midlands. John weighs in this morning on our Firehouse Love text line. You have to have ba Bally Sports to watch the Braves games. Trust me, I've tried everything. Direct TV, FUBU, or Spectrum. Does anybody have 803-404-6100? Just, we're throwing this out there. I have YouTube TV. Does anybody have FUBU? And what is your thoughts on it? I, I, there's well, so many streaming options now out there. It's obviously FUBO, right? Because FUBU. No, FUBO. It was obviously my... I don't even know. FUBU I, I, was my, my clothing of choice in 1999. So yeah, I I, I'm not familiar with it at all. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I, I know what it is. It's it's on my... I have it on my apps, but I've never bothered with it. And I'm just interested. I, I don't like... I've been happy with YouTube TV, although they continue to raise the prices. I'm just throwing it out there because, and we'll talk again tomorrow on our, our Chop House Talk segment uh, when we get really into the Braves. It is ridiculous. What, what Major League Baseball has done and how they have completely screwed up regional broadcasting and their whole network of, of uh, broadcasting baseball games is, is insane. It is a lesson in how not to run a business, if you will. Uh, to be able to watch your team. Uh, I get it, Bally has it, and if you have Spectrum or if you have Fubo, whatever whatever it's called, uh, or, or as he says, DirecTV, and I did have DirecTV at one point, but it's just interesting that th this is what it's come to. Well, again, the issue is access. If you're going to make people go through extra steps to get to something where people may not already be involved in with so many options out there, I'm just not taking the extra step. Yeah. It's just not what it is. It's it's I don't know I don't know but uh, I, I, we're gonna make the effort we're making the effort to to be more invested more involved in Major League Baseball uh, this year. Willie weighs in and this is this is kind of he says just switch to Fubo from YouTube TV seven dollars more a month and you get MLB Network and Bally but you lose TNT and TBS. I gotta admit I'd rather so, have TNT and TBS. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy Griffin, Friends, Friends, Friends is what I miss. Uh, Point Break, <laughs> just think about any other movie. Yes, many episodes, <laughs> many episodes, or many many times of replay. Uh, interesting. We as we get into the summer, we may discuss some of this and and try and be a a, a community help for what's out there because there's so many. See, I'm just thinking, just off the top of my head, I have Peacock now, I have Amazon, I have MLB Network, uh, I have Netflix, I have YouTube TV, uh, that's five, I have Apple TV, that's six. Uh, what am I doing with my life? I don't yeah. even watch that much TV. It's tough. You need, we, we need to just create one of those flow charts, you know, like yeah. if you are a sports fan, look here. Are you a Braves fan? Take this one. You know, just a flow chart to show somebody where they should land up. 
Yeah, uh, it's uh, very odd, uh, but uh, we'll continue. Again, baseball today, it's getaway day uh, across Major League Baseball. Today is a lot of early games taking place. Uh, again, South Carolina baseball tonight, 645 pregame, 7 o'clock first pitch. But again, as I mentioned, getaway day for uh, for Major League Baseball with Kansas City, Baltimore at 1 o'clock. Uh, the Angels and the Marlins get fired up. There's your, That's one that if I come in tomorrow, I'm like, oh, I got, I got hung on the Angels and the Marlins. You like Bill? Shout out to Coach Ron Washington, man. He's got That's a, true. He's got a head coaching job out there. I uh, did hear that he called a team meeting after Game Two. So they were 0-2, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's the time to call a team meeting. Or <laughs> the, <laughs> I don't know how that works, but shout the, out to the, Coach. The Washington. team meetings in well, yeah, I think it was the yeah. Was it a team? Did he call it or? Or did the Angels just have a – I thought they had a players-only meeting after game two. It wasn't a players It was a team meeting, I think. Okay. I think. If it was a players-only meeting, then you can definitely cancel the season. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, definitely over if they call the players-only meeting. If you're, if you're two games in. By the way, just the uh, last night, uh, the Diamondbacks thumped the Yankees 7 to nothing. Christian Walker with a good night. Uh, two hits, three RBIs, two of four last night, a home run. I'm just laughing thinking about Mike Trout sitting at another losing meeting. He's like, guys <laughs> – I don't want to hear any of this. I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. I'm going to hit 40 home runs this year, still 100 bases, and you all are still going to be terrible. I, I, uh, the, the, you say that, like, I get it. If you're Mike Trout or, you know, if you're normally, not all, but the majority of, the majority of, of athletes are ultra competitive, right? But all I can imagine is any meeting Mike Trout's in, he just has his phone looking at his bank account. <laughs> I, that's the only thing that makes him smile is he just looks at his bank account. Yeah, it's and definitely it's just not like, winning. It's definitely not winning. And he's looking at how long that contract, he's like, man, good grief. 803-404-6100, uh, how you can wait. We'll get back into uh, some some spring football practice coming up in a few minutes. A scrimmage scheduled for this coming Saturday. Uh, spring practice April 20th in which uh, Preston has weaseled his way out. What a job. What a what a masterful job of weaseling out of the cocky trot 5K for the Lexington Somerville uh, bet that we had. Um, and we'll listen to it coming up in the next segment. We're going to get a little bit more into football. Two aspects yesterday, Shane Beamer talking about the spring game in reference to the portal opening, but also talking about Nick Harbour. And we'll talk a little bit about him. Uh, but as we count down now, is there anything you are looking forward, looking to for the spring game? Yeah, it's the quarterback question. Uh, I, I think not necessarily seeing separation, but I want to see somebody. I, I what, Here's what I want. I want the Norris to take the bull by the horns, take the position, become the number one guy, and then see who competes for backing him up. If, to me, that would indicate a successful season. If we come out of the spring with questions in the air about quarterback, I don't like that. And I want it to be Lenoris. Do you? I, I wondered. Uh, I tell you what, Jen. Let's let's real quick. Let's go back and play number three for those who didn't hear. This is Shane Beamer discussing separation in the quarterback battle with Saturday's scrimmage coming up. Because I'm going to ask Preston a question after we listen to this about naming a starter, a true starter coming out of spring. Here is Shane Beamer yesterday on the separation in the quarterback battle. Uh, I wouldn't say separation. Those guys are continuing to battle. Obviously, when you talk about <clears throat> uh, going in the stadium and guys being able to separate themselves, that's a position that they'll all get a lot of reps on Saturday and um, a lot of reps, and they'll get an opportunity to kind of show how they handle operating the offense with the coaches not out there telling them everything and, and coaching every single rep. Uh, so I think there, you know, some guys will, there'll be some separation on Saturday, I would imagine, just because how, you know, how we're going to set it up. And, and you hope there is, but there's great competition going in there. A lot of those guys are getting reps and they're all competing and making each other better. Uh, the biggest thing, Phil, I would say is just one, how they operate. Okay, they're in the stadium now and it's a scrimmage game-like setting with officials and everything. How how, uh, you know, do can 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 guys operate? Can they run the offense and and communicate and the things that you have to do? And then certainly protecting the protecting the ball. They've done a really good job of that. As the head coach, you know, you love it when there's a lot of turnovers from a defensive standpoint because they're taking the ball away. And then you don't like it as an offensive coach or as a head coach because the offense is turning the ball over too much. And then when the offense doesn't turn it over, you're excited for the offense, but you're like, man, we got to continue to take the ball away like we've done a great job of defensively. But 
the last two practices, um, we've uh, we've done a really good job offensively of uh, protecting the football. I think there was one turnover today, and one interception today, but it was a ball that got kind of ricocheted, bang bang play with a receiver and a DB, and the ball popped up in the air, and and it was a DQ Smith running to the ball and made an interception. But for the most part, the quarterbacks have done a good job of making good decisions, and want to see them continue to just uh, uh, do that on Saturday for sure. Does he? He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. Do they need to officially name? And I, I go with Lenora Sellers, but do they need to officially name a starter coming out of the spring? Or are you a believer in that? No, we don't want to name a starter. So competition carries on through the summer. Uh, I think you can name a starter and still have competition. Uh, there is something to be said for everybody knowing who the guy is. But what I, what I will also say is this: you have to be very careful if you don't, because there, there will be there is a guy in the locker room who is the starter, and when we watch him play, we all think he should be the starter. And if that doesn't line up with what the coaches are saying, that could cause dissension. And so that's the thing that gets tricky with quarterback battles is because people are usually lining up behind one guy, whether the coaches want to say it or not. And I think our our general feeling. I'm sure Robbie Ashford doesn't feel this way, is that it is Lenora Sellers that is will be the starter. I mean, that's – Rob. I, I can't – I don't like the attitude or if Robbie Ashford came here knowing, okay, I'm going to be his backup. Like, that's not the He's, attitude. Right, you, you want him to come and compete. But I do wonder, and we'll play it for you in the next segment. Look, I, I don't know all the transfer rules anymore. <laughs> They've completely evolved. The NCAA's just been like, do whatever you want. I don't care. Play for two schools if you want at the same time. If they get a game on Thursday, play that one. Play for another school. The NCAA doesn't know what to do. But one of the questions that was asked yesterday was on uh, the the spring game occurring uh, after the the transfer portal opens. What is today? Today's the third. The transfer portal opens in two weeks on a Monday on the 15th. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit when we come back. Also discuss Nick Harbor as well. There is some interesting college basketball news I want to throw at you as well. It's taking place out west. A SEC coach interviewing for a big-time job. I'll tell you about that. A sitting SEC basketball coach interviewing for a big-time job. I'll tell you all about that as well. we got a lot to get to here in about 50 minutes to do it. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner. She's Jen Jensen. It's the early game. Bill Gunner for the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder with First Palmetto Bank. If you're thinking about making a move this summer or you're thinking about building a home, you've found that piece of land that you love and now it's time to build a home, it's time for you to contact Jacob Crowder, the mortgage guru, and First Palmetto Bank. They have a no-nonsense construction loan that could be perfect for you, but you will not know until you call 803-719-1005. You can even email Jacob today and get more information. Information. It's the letter J Crowder, C R O W D E R at firstpalmetto.com. Jacob Crowder helped me four years ago get a great interest rate and helped me with all the paperwork that was needed on the new condo that I have out in Lexington. And it was absolutely fantastic, very easy, and he'll do the exact same for you. So contact the mortgage guru today, 803 719 1005. He's the mortgage guru for a reason. Find out for yourself. Call Jacob Crowder today. Tell him you heard it with Bill Gunner.
Still working with that fallen tree, Harmon Street near Laurel Street in Lexington. Uh, traffic lights continue to malfunction, Hugey and Blossom Street. Accident reported Highway 302 at Old Dunbar Road. I-126 eastbound at Greystone Boulevard still dealing with that. Killian at Nuttall in front of Kroger got a report of an accident there. And uh, I-77 northbound at Bluff Road. So be careful. Uh, the rain seems to be not uh, falling like it was earlier. There were just really torrential downpours. If you missed that, lucky you. But, uh, again, still some wet conditions out there, so be careful. This stuff should be clearing out later on this morning, and we'll be left with a high of 74. Right now it's 69 with some rain in the Midlands. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. That's how you can weigh in if you want to join us this morning. I'll get to that basketball news coming up in the next segment. Uh, Southern Cal, uh, Southern Cal's got some interesting situations going on there. Eric Musselman interviewed for that job yesterday out in L.A., uh, but Bronny James. Some interesting decisions he's got to make, and LeBron addressed that. We'll talk about that in the next segment. Uh, it's been a wild morning with the with the with the board, hadn't it been? Are you seeing that? Not sure. Okay. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Thunderstorm, storms. It's all kind of wild stuff taking place this morning. 803-404-6100. Shane Beamer talking yesterday. One of the things he talked about, Preston, the spring game will be on Saturday. The 20th, the transfer portal opens on the 15th. Now, I don't know what the rules are for the transfer portal opening on the 15th. I don't know what the rules are, but then maybe having an official visit over that weekend for a player to come in and watch the spring game and be like, ooh, they stink there. They could use me. I don't – I'm not sure. Now, Shane addressed this <laughs> – Hey, suit up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shane addressed this about his – after blaming the fans a tad. I'm, I'm, if Coach Beamer is listening, I'm picking on him. But <laughs> he explains how the spring game fell where it has fallen. You and all your golf tournaments. Your golf tur- Yeah, golf, Masters, Carolina Cup was a – here's Shane Beamer yesterday talking about the spring game and referencing to the transfer portal opening. Yes. Um, I think there's a lot when you set the spring practice schedule – I love it, but I'm in a unique state where no matter when we make the spring game, half the fan base is going to be ticked off at me because it's either the Masters weekend or the Heritage weekend. And if it's the Masters weekend, everybody's mad. How could you do the spring game the weekend of the Masters? And if you do it the weekend of the Heritage and Hilton Head, they're mad at me. How could you do the spring game the same weekend as the Heritage and Hilton Head? So that enters your thinking a little bit. So this weekend, this year, it's the same weekend as the Heritage. So I apologize um, to that segment of the fan base. It's not happy about that. Um, I think it was a little bit, certainly I thought about the portal when it's opening, but it is what it is. Um, I really just kind of liked it that we have the spring game and then literally the spring game is Saturday and our last day of class is on Monday. So it's literally 48 hours, not even 48 hours after the spring game's over. It's the last day of class. I think it's Monday this year, but it's that week uh, as well. So I like just being able to finish spring, excuse me, finish spring practice and then end of the semester and they go right into exams. We're having kind of our exit meetings as well. <clears throat> and then going back to the beginning of spring practice, probably the biggest thing that we just pushed it back was giving our guys an extra week in the weight room after spring break. You know, so we've always done our off-season conditioning winter workouts weight room plan january february 
they'd go they would go on spring break and then they come back from spring break and then it was right in the practice on like Tuesday so this year we said let's give these guys as much as I like to think when they were in I think Luke Doty went to Cancun Luke may have but as much as I like to think when our players were in Mexico or wherever else that they were working out and they were training for spring practice the next week they probably weren't uh, so instead of just throwing them right back into it let's give them a week to kind of reacclimate to the weight room running get ramp up and then be ready to roll right into spring practice the following week and gives us an extra week in the weight room physically and gives us another week in the meeting room to continue to learn with so many new players that are learning a system offense defense and special teams for the first time so it's a combination of golf class schedules and uh, physical uh, ramping up for spring practice there you go like I said Shane Shane talked a lot um first off if you're training over spring break you're a dork okay that's one that's one get, get a life especially if you're in mexico yeah if you're like oh <laughs> you're Cancun. Hey, hey guys i know this is a great time but i got five sets of ten to do really quickly because luke day sent me to work out get out of here so yeah no problem I, I hope i i hope for the sake insanity of these young people that none of them <laughs> trained at all during spring break that's one um, but, yeah, there's a lot of considerations to make as far as schedule. I think all the golf stuff, that's periphery, but the, the most interesting part is the transfer portal part because that's when the second part opens. And a lot of guys, you come into spring practice with a lot of hope, and when you see your reps changing or your, your role on the team is not what you thought it was going to be, a lot of people will be making decisions. Uh, I It's... The transfer portal, and then there's going to be a day they get it off. There, hopefully, in the years to come, there'll be a dead day they get the whole thing figured out. You're right; there's still going to be an altering of the roster, and guys will be brought in. South Carolina's not done in the transfer portal. J.C. Sherbert talked about it yesterday. They're going to go hunting for a left tackle, essentially another tackle in the transfer portal. There's discussion that they're going to go looking for a bigger, taller, more physical wide receiver because they don't have one. And that brings us to our next point. Oh, they do have one. It's just that he's splitting time. And yesterday, Shane Beamer addressed Nick Harbour doing as much as he can. Yeah, I believe so in regards to he and Lenoris and, and other guys being able to do stuff on their own. He and uh, Coach Furry being able to do kind of stuff on their own within the rules and whatever Nick wants to do. But when he's... When, when class isn't conflicting with his schedule, he's here. You know, so obviously the weekends, I think the last two weekends, they've had track meets last week. I think they were in Florida and the weekend before they were here. So he hasn't been around on Saturdays. We weren't here this Saturday, but he hasn't really been around on the weekends. Um, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday are days that, that we meet and lift as well for the morning. So he's working around class schedule on that, but it works out pretty good for the practice days. He was here today um, as well, and and he's adamant about being a great football player. And it's not like when he's here, oh my God, Nick's in the building and all that. It's just which kind of expect and walk in. There he is sitting in front row in the team meeting or second row in the team meeting right in the middle and and uh, involved. So he wants to give his all to track and, and be the very best he can be there for those guys. But then he also wants to be his very best for football and, and uh, give everything he can to football also. I know what he wants to be, but that is – almost impossible you can want to be a lot of things i don't know if nick is in his development process as far as football where him just wanting to be there or him just even being there taking mental reps is going to be enough for him to develop as much as he needs to develop I, as i've said anything you get out of him this year is gravy i it's hard for me to look at him to look at at nick harbour this year in 2024 and and say that he'll have 15 catches I, I just don't know. There are, as you've said, and as I at least understand, even though I never had to go through it, as you've said, he, he, it's not about knowing the plays. You know, Nick Harbour is a very <laughs> smart, a smart individual. Yeah. He is, if you've ever talked to him, if you've ever watched him, he is a very smart individual. I'm sure he knows the plays. His thing is he was a raw athlete coming out of high school. He was an absolutely raw athlete. And for those, that, by the way, that want to continue to say, well, move him to defensive end and just tell him rush the passer, well, there's still also fundamentals he's got to learn there, but he's not gaining the weight necessary to do that. That is part of the deal. He wants to be – he his weight is important to be able to run track efficiently and at the level that he wants to. His weight has to stay at a certain spot. And so the defensive end option is, is A, 
also a part of getting the reps, but B, it, it's it's a part of of something that he flat doesn't want to do. He's going he's going to be a wide receiver, and and quite honestly, they're going to go out. They're going to look for a a taller, more physical wide receiver in the transfer portal, and then you're going to have guys that you hope are stepping up. Amari uh, Huggins Bruce is is a guy that comes to mind as a transfer. Jared Brown, Gage Lavendane, Larvendane is. I mean, there's there's you know three guys right there. That, that are transfers guys that have come in, and that doesn't count Tyshawn Russell, who they're hoping will step up. That also, by the way, doesn't count Josh Simon and Brady Hunt at the tight end position. Nick Harper's going to be way down the list of guys that I think will be key contributors in 2024. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's fair to say. I think that's fair to say, and especially with him not getting the development time that he needs during the spring. In order for you to be a two-sport athlete, you have to be a tremendous athlete – and what I mean by athlete is do you have ball skills? Do you have just the – the? he has the raw materials. Right. He's fast. He's tall. He can jump. But that doesn't necessarily translate into being an athlete. And from one of the things that I saw last year on the field, there's still some athletic things that he needs to take care of or he needs to develop in order for him to become an optional as a wide receiver. So, uh, again, it's great that he wants to. And it's great that everybody's working to try and get this to happen. But I just don't think there's enough development time for him to be able to become what we hoped he would become as a wide receiver. You take, as we see here on April 3rd, 12 over under on 12 catches. Mm. I said, no, I didn't think he'd get 15. You said 15, 15 so, so you said the under. I don't, know what the, I don't know what the number is. If I'm thinking impact, I would say somewhere – I would you could I'd safely take the under. I I the reason I say twelve catches, one hundred ninety five yards, and a touchdown. That's year? what he had last year. And I and I feel like, I feel like while you're not going to have a person, I feel like while you're not going to have a person with seventy one catches like Xavier Leggett did, I do feel like you're going to see the ball spread around more. And I also don't know if you're going to see as many passes this year from Lenore Sellers with the fact that he can run. Spencer Rattler threw three hundred and ninety nine passes last year. <laughs> Yeah, and also, what does it mean if, if if Nick is being targeted more? Does that mean that the wide receiver room has not developed? I don't think, yeah. Does that I, mean I that there's not as many targets? Either, what does that mean? Either he has done something incredible. So that if we switch it around, if we say we don't want Nick to have that many targets because what that means is that the wide receiver room hasn't developed as we hoped it would during or he's, the spring. Or he's phenomenal. Or, or he's phenomenal. Or something happened. He's got the summer, but I think. But he's fo he's focusing on tracking the summer. Right. And that's his. Continuing to focus on it more so than, I'd say, 65-35, 60-40, somewhere in there. He's okay doing that for track. He needs more development in football. I agree. 803-404-6100. We'll talk a little basketball, both men's and women's, when we come back. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner. She's Jen Jensen. It's the early game. Rain today, but warmer weather on the way. And you know what? That means heading home after a long afternoon and enjoying your personal backyard pool. And at Corley Pool Solutions, they want to make sure it is ready to be enjoyed. They believe in providing the absolute highest quality swimming pool service at the most affordable price to you and your family. So you need to give them a call and get maintenance lined up today. Don't wait until it's too late. 803-445-8109 with Corley pool solutions they have flat rate pricing and that includes all of the chemicals so when they tell you how much it's going to cost you know how much it's going to cost there's no hidden fees there's no all of a sudden surprises on the bill it's flat rate pricing including all of the chemicals and that allows it to be more affordable for you to use Corley pool solutions than for you to go to the pool store and try and do it yourself find out more today by calling Corley pool solutions 803-445-8109 
Still working that earlier tie-up I-77 northbound at Bluff Road. Also I-126 eastbound at Greystone Boulevard. Getting things cleared out of the way. Killian at Nuttall in front of Kroger. Highway 302 at Old Dunbar Road. And uh, the, the tree that fell, Harmon Street near Laurel Street. Getting that cleared up. And uh, traffic lights still, our understanding, are not working Hugey right there at Gervais Street and also at, at Blossom Street, our understanding as well. So do be careful out there this morning. It should be clearing out here in just a little bit. It's already looking a little bit lighter, so that's good news. 74 will be our high today and 63 tomorrow, 65 on Friday. It's 69 with still a little bit of scattered rain in the Midlands on the early game. Well, I look up at the television above us and Preston Thorne. Never mind, we don't get the the dun 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 the 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 sporty sports talk music when it's time for sporty sports talk music. I was looking Yeah, I'd for, love to know why it was not playing. We don't get our dun dun dun. Oh, we because we're gonna do another promo. <laughs> Seriously, what gremlins are in the system right now? Bad day for the boards. Does Caitlin Clark have to win the championship to be the GOAT? This is the part. Oh, there it is. This is the part where we point fingers and we grit teeth and we yell at each other because that's a sporty sports talk conversation. Right? They're having it on first take. It was Mike Greenberg totally invested. Do you want my answer? Go ahead. Whatever. Yes. Yes. This is a simple answer. Yes. <laughs> you can score a lot of points. That's awesome. You could be the greatest individual accomplishment, but what are we doing if we're not winning championships? I think, I think this is where I'm supposed to yell back at you. No. I think that's yeah, I no, think that's not, not. I think that's supposed to work. She can be one of the best to ever play the game. She can be the longest distance range free uh three point shooter. Uh obviously she has the accolades that she has, but I mean, there were women previous to her who were holding that mantle. Obviously, we have one, Asia Wilson. Uh, let's not forget Breonna Stewart, Sue Bird, Maya Moore, Shamiqua Holesclaw. A lot of those women won championships. And so, yeah, in order for you to be... Con she's in a conversation about the most... I think Dawn Staley put it best. She said, yeah, she is the best of her time, for sure. But in order to win champion, in order to be considered a goat, you gotta you gotta win a ring, man. That's 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 kind of I don't now. Here's my thing: I don't need I don't quantify how many rings you win. I don't care if you win right. six or twelve like Tom Brady. I don't need that. But in order to get into this club, you gotta have you gotta have certain things. You gotta have a jacket. You gotta have a polo. You gotta be dressed properly. And one of these things is a ring. Okay. And if you're not wearing a ring, you don't get the you dress don't. code. Okay. You're not meeting the dress code to get into this exclusive club. You can hang outside. But you can't get in the club. Not, without not allowed past the door. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. You can be a valet. You can do it. You can even come to the party on the on the garden. But to get inside the building, you have to be wearing a ring. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. Good. I job. don't care how many you, rings. You defeated me. All right, that's uh, defeated me. That's not how. That's not how it works, though. <laughs> you got to come back with something sports, else. Sporty sports talk. There. Let's get out to the Love Chevy phone lines. <laughs> Scott wants to weigh in on the women's tournament. Scott, how you doing this morning? What's on your mind? Hey guys, how are y'all? Good. It. Um, so I keep having nightmares about Caitlin Clark and beating us last year. And, and I feel like when I left the house this morning, I heard Gino on the TV saying that they don't plan on stopping her, you know, stopping Caitlin. And I'm, my theory, I'm not as smart as Don by any means, of course, but I'm just kind of like, all right, we've got all these McDonald's All-Americans on our one team. And I think the only way you defend Caitlin, tell me if I'm wrong, I think you take a one player – and you take him for every two minutes, and you blitzkrieg Caitlin. I mean, like, smother her. Now, I know that'll wear you out. I get it. But that's why every two minutes, you throw the, you know, you switch from Malaysia to Pow Pow, and I mean, smother. Because I, I feel like every time Caitlin has the ball, I feel like I'm watching Steph Curry. 
Like, I just don't know where she's going to shoot it from. And then I'm holding my breath. I'm sure it's going to go in. And I just have nightmares that she's going to beat us again. <laughs> I agree with you. I, I told, I said that yesterday on our Gamecocks Plus taping with Jay Phillips, that, that that's how I, that's how I would do it is, uh, is to just rotate. South Carolina has depth and a runner. She's going to play close to 40 minutes, and I would, yes, I, I, I'd i probably go four minutes of a pop, but switch from Raven Johnson to Malaysia Fulwiley to uh, a Tessa I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know who Dawn would list. If Dawn has, like, a, a ranking system of her best defenders and to just to just go with that and, and almost have three or four, and I'd even mix in, a, 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 as, as crazy as it sounds, I like Ashlyn Watkins' feet. I think she moves them pretty good just to throw a taller defender on her occasionally go with because you do have camilla cardoso around the rim to protect the rim not many people have six seven standing around the rim to protect the rim and if she beats ashlyn watkins off the dribble again we're not talking about the whole game but just different moments to throw caitlin clark off where if she beats her off of the dribble if she if she beats ashlyn off the dribble you have someone there to clean it up i i, I kind of agree with scott on that yes all of that sounds great and as Kim Mulkey said yesterday, good luck. Good luck. Yeah, yeah good luck. Um, that's the reason why great players are great is because coaches have gone on the boards and they've tried to draw it up the X's O's. Last year, we put our best defender, my number three game cock of all time, Bree Beal. We put her on her, and it was – she still got hers. Yeah. And so I think Caitlin's going to get hers. I don't know whether it's a situation where you try and let her get hers and you eliminate the other players. That's what you do. Coaches have been trying to figure this out for a while do you just cross your fingers and hope she misses more shots than she makes? I don't know. You're trying to eliminate the rest of the team. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Caitlin, she is the, – it's the same thing that that uh, Lamont Paris did with Dalton Connect. And Dalton Connect got 31 in that first game. I think it was 31, but it took him a lot to get it. Make it make them as make, hard as possible. Yeah, make it, make it as hard as possible. And, and the 12 assists, that's where you got to – you hope she doesn't have more than six. You hope that she's not that uh, effective. Thank you for the phone call, Scott. Appreciate Eight, the call. 803-404-6100. Uh, the numbers did come out. 12 million viewers for LSU-Iowa. Yeah, monster, monster numbers. Um, there's a lot of reasons that we got here, but I think the first thing is the knowledge that this has been building over time, and it could not have been a more perfect matchup between the – I'm doing air quotes here. The controversy at the end of last year's championship. You have transcendent players, uh, characters, villains, all of these things that sort of built up to where people were intrigued. Because 12 million people indicates that out of that 12 million, I'm not sure what the normal draw is for a women's basketball game, but there were a lot of casuals that were tuned in, and they were tuned in for all of those peripheral reasons. Now, the, the... the challenge for women's basketball is to try and keep those casuals engaged in the rest of these games because they still have some tremendous games left in the rest of the tournament. It's it's just keeping it's it's doing what baseball that we've joked about is doing what baseball is so bad at. It's marketing your elite people, whether that's Dawn Staley being in a uh, what is that a uh, Aflac. Aflac commercial, whether it's Malaysia Fulwiley getting more face time, whether it, it, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that Angel Reese is going pro. And, look, Angel Reese is polarizing. That's what it is. You know, Juju Watkins putting her in, I think, what is that? Is that another, what is what is that commercial? She's in several. Me? She's in, like, two or three commercials. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's putting your stars. To the fact that she's featured in one of the commercials with jo- Joel Embiid where he's getting the Juju hairstyle, and everybody associates that with a thing. So all of those associations that you're creating, and Juju's going to be here for a while, at least two more years. Right. Um, and so all of those things are associated, and it builds up over time where people were intrigued by uh, by these women because as most people, especially here, I think we have a unique vantage point. It's like we've been following women's basketball for a long time because we've been good, obviously, but maybe the rest of the country hasn't been privy to that. 803-404-6100 is how you can weigh in. We'll get back out to Love Chevy Fellons in a minute. Just to, just to tell you, Iowa LSU outdrew all but one of the – Five games, all but one of the five games in last year's NBA Finals, also outdrew the game-clinching World Series contest 
Uh, it was it surpassed. This is kind of crazy just because it was 1983, but it surpassed the most watched women's game, which was 11.84 million people back in 1983. So now, as historians, we got to go back and figure out what was happening then. What was that moment? Kim Mulkey was playing for Louisiana Tech and was matched up against Cheryl Miller in the national championship game. There you go. Very much, very high-level players. Those are two people we're still talking about in regards to the women's games. Obviously, with Juju breaking Cheryl Miller's freshman record, Kim Mulkey still coaching. And so the game is evolving, but there has to be ten-pole pieces in order for people to tune in to a sport that they don't normally tune into. And that's where all the stories come in. That's where all the stories come in. You have to have it. 803-404-6100. One other crazy stat. According to ESPN, it was the most watched men's or women's basketball game, men's or women's, ever, ever on ESPN. The original record on ESPN, remember that one that I just mentioned, the championship game that was uh, on uh, basic K, uh, uh, basic te- television. On ESPN, the most watched women's game ever was the national championship game between Connecticut and Oklahoma back in 2002 at 5.68 million. The most watched men's game ever on ESPN. ESPN's most watched men's game, Preston. The 2008 regular season matchup between Duke and North Carolina, which drew 5.61 million. Almost doubled it. Again, that's just that's just ESPN. 803-404-6100. We'll come back. We'll wrap everything up. It's the early game. Bill Gunner for the Acton Law Firm. Boy, tax day is coming up quickly. And probably a lot of you have already gotten your taxes done, and maybe something has gone wrong. You've already received something back from the IRS you did not want, like a levy, a lien. Something is going on with your business or your personal taxes, your your business or your personal taxes, and it's got you a little stressed out. Don't be. Call the Ecton Law Firm. They know how to deal with this. They have professionals. They have a local team dedicated to resolving your income or business tax issues for good. So if you've already experienced any of these, make the phone call today and get in touch with John Ecton and his team. 803-771-9800. Again, that's 803-771-9800. If you've received a notice from the IRS and you and or your business are in trouble, contact the Ecton Law Firm and you can get a free consultation. Again, that phone number 803-771-9800. That's the Ecton Law Firm. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you.
849 as we wrap things up here on the early game. Real quick, let me tell you about my good friends at Mid-State Roofing. We've had a lot of rain this morning. There will be more on the way this summer. We're going to have some of those summer thunderstorms that we always get. And have you checked your roof for leak detection? That's right. Or you might not even have to check. You might be sitting in your house and you're seeing some water come through and you're thinking, hmm, this is not good. Well, guess what? Call Mid-State Roofing today. they got a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week call center that's ready to help you. So give them a phone call 803-356-1919 they'll help protect that roof with a maintenance contract and make sure that it is keeping your business or your home nice and dry they'll do it in a manner that's both safe and pleasing to your operation trust me mid-state roofing is who you need to get in touch with today they've been the leader for nearly 30 years in the roofing and the waterproofing industry find out for yourself a little little maintenance contract 803-356-1919 call mid-state roofing today tell them you heard it with bill gunner 107.5 the game let's get out to the love chevy phone lines hank wants to weigh in this morning hank how you doing what's on your mind hey i'm doing fine fellas um yeah i think if uh if we're blessed to win uh friday night and and we end up running to iowa um there's two things i think will help us as fans that worry about it. i think don knows what she's doing, but number two, um, you know, uh, the coach from Iowa said that their plan against LSU was they saw that LSU only plays five deep and they got gas, and so they would, their thing was just to run and run and run, and LSU ran with them, and they figured in the third quarter it would wear out, um, and they and they said that that that's what happened. LSU got tired; they saw it in a lot of the games this year, so they figured that would just leave them when they were gas, leaving Clark over for shots. And so um, I'm not sure that would work against us. But uh, the other thing I do, I think what we fixed over the season is going to help us because if you remember last year, it was a four-point game, but we shot horribly. I mean, shot terribly. And so uh, I just, you know, you're not going to stop her. She may get 35, but, you know, they, they've they been beaten four or five times. You flutter, like Bill said, and if she, uh, if she gets around and you start that downhill drive, you're going to meet her with Cadoza, or you're going to meet her with Watkins or Fagan um, at the rim so that you make those layups harder. Appreciate the phone call, Hank. It's, I mean, look, it, that is – look, now, South Carolina was 4 of 20 against Oregon State. They were 4 of 20 from three-point range. You, you're also not going to be able to shoot that way yeah, probably against NC State, definitely against Iowa, and win. One step at a time. I feel like I'm going to my coaching cliche bag here. One step at a, step at a time. The next game is the big game. I have uh, to. We don't have to do that. You and I don't. The, oh, no. the team does. The team has got to be totally focused on NC State. No. That's the good part about doing sports talk, yeah, right? Not being a, I know, affiliated. We can skip ahead. The team has to be focused on NC State. Yeah. and I mean, there were, there were a lot of things. I think they, as you watch, if you remember that game from last year, they, they kind of for lack of a better expression, got caught with their pants down as far as being able to defend the pick and roll. They were doing some of the outlet passing on them. And just, Iowa almost played a perfect game, and we played the one of the worst games we played all year. And it was a perfect storm situation. I don't see that happening again. But this team has been pushed on several occasions. So, as, as one of my coaches used to say, they get scholarships too. So, we'll see. Let's take one more phone call here before we wrap it up. Gary wants to weigh in. Gary, how are you doing this morning? What's on your mind? I'm doing great, fellas. How you doing? Just moved down to South Carolina in August from Hartford, Connecticut. Just want to say hold on to those ranges because, you know, let's not put Connecticut out there yet. You know, Paige and Caitlin's going to be a great matchup. And I tell you, UConn can't do what you're actually talking about because they only have six to seven players to put on Caitlin. But Gino's been there before. And hold on. Let's, let's one game at a time, gentlemen. And, again, <laughs> Whoever meets South Carolina, I've been hearing this talk, you know, South Carolina. I listened to that for 10, 12 years in Hartford because UConn won it every year. So let's slow down and let's take what's in front of us today. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you very thank, much, thank, guys. Thank you for listening, Gary. Welcome, welcome to Call the Call of the show. Thank you. And I think something weird is happening to me, but I was going to save it, but I might as well do it now. I'm seeing Gino get gray. I read an article about him and his family. Uh-oh. 
Don't do that. Something's no, happening to me, man. No, I'm, I, no. Something has happened to me, man. I just, I just saw Gio up there. He's talking about how he's starting to embrace the journey now, and Paige is sort of giving him the blues. And he, he kind of looks like Grandpa over there. They're like, whatever, Gino. He's not scowling at him anymore. Something's happening to me. But great call. Glad you're listening. And it's, and obviously, you know, being from Hartford, you know how important women's basketball is. And, and welcome to the state, to a town where it's important here also. Yeah. And again, we'll we'll continue to get ready for this. Hopefully. Yeah, you, Bill, something's happening. I don't know. That is concerning. And uh, that it's concerning that you're, you're developing happening. an affinity for Gino Oriyama. I'm not um, saying that. I just read an article, man. It just, I don't know. Worried about you. Worried about this. Uh, but no, to, to go back and, and uh, kind of cover it, man, uh, we will we will get fully engaged on this Friday out at Charwood. Obviously, we'll talk more about it tomorrow as well. But fully engaged on Friday. We hope to see you out there for the spring golf tournament. Call and get registered today. 803-755-2000 is how you can register for the uh, spring golf tournament. Fun show. A lot, it's a lot of discussion. Shane Beamer carried us through with a lot of, <laughs> a lot of wordsmithing. Appreciate it, Shane. We will be back tomorrow here in studio Friday out at Charwood. Look forward to seeing you all there. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day.